What's going on? I am Nando. And I'm DJ. Oh, God. And I'm Dr. Chris Diggins at your service. <gasps> Oh, and better. this is mostly nitpicking, a podcast where every week we pick a pretty piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. Woohoo! Woo-hoo! Yeah, hooray! This week we're finally doing it. They showed us the movie, <laughs> and we saw it. We it, can now it happened. officially it confirm that Morbius is coming out. Yeah, exactly. It's a. Uh, it's been a long, long ride, you know? It's been a long journey indeed. It's been a long, it's been a long ride with you, my friend, but, uh, I'm trying to think of a funny line to, like, a way to change it so it's a Morbius theme, but all I can think of is the word blood disease. I don't remember any other words from that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I know, what, I remember one from, other line, but I'll save that from for From Furious later. 7. Your only other yeah. line you remember from Furious 7 is blood disease. It's blood disease, <laughs> yeah. Uh... But yeah, you guys, we're here to talk about Dr. Michael Morbius at your service, a movie that is in theaters now. Uh, yeah. But mm-hmm. before that... We went and checked. Yeah, some, we, we, all, all three of us, and you know what? I've seen so many pictures from people on the internet of empty theaters that they are in. Have you guys seen these on, on Twitter? Haven't. No. Yeah, I, oh, I saw a couple. So- so many. I could have done it. There like, was like th- hash- three other people in my theater. Yeah, like hashtag Morbius sweep, baby. It's gonna take all the records, and then just like an empty theater. It's, you know, it's kind of funny. Sense. Um, but you guys, before that, we gotta do some chit chat. I'll do chit chat today to talk about the uh, bracket thing. Um, okay. What's the story with that, DJ? You want to give us a rundown of who won and why and stuff? Not just well, who won? First of all, the the actual tournament, but then right. we, we have a winner of our uh, tournament as well. We and do. Please, uh, uh, comprehensively explain why every single team uh, got the placement <laughs> that they did. Well, uh, I, the one I liked was Rob. I don't remember their names. Uh, Purdue, I'll, maybe? I'll, I'll, I'll do one of these. Baylor. The Baylor, Baylor. There you yeah, go. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll I'll certainly do one of those things. All right. So uh, congratulations to uh, Bear1995 uh, for winning the tournament. I, I will get to their selection in a minute. Um, the winner of the tournament was Kansas. Came down to Kansas USC. Really tight game. Kansas was down 15 at the half, so it looked like it was going to go to UNC. If that were to happen, um, uh, uh, old, old uh, college uh, friend of ours, um, Ned, would have won. And he told me that if he won, uh, he would have picked Turning Red. So I was never rooting for Kansas Harder. Uh, so luckily, Kansas won, and now we don't have to do Turning Red. Um, we will instead be doing, at some point, Ghost Rider. Now, I assume we are. that means the first one, right? Uh, yeah. It, okay. Uh, it, it wasn't... I feel like if it was Ghost Rider 2, that... They would have said that. Bear would have said Ghost Rider 2. Yeah, so, uh, Spirit of Vengeance. The Spirit of Vengeance. Uh, I do think right. that is the more interesting of the two, but we'll I get this one out under our belt and then maybe get to that one. Yeah. Uh, also, true. you Why heard it here first, everybody. DJ hates turning red, never wants to be forced to watch nope. it again. Uh, exactly. Thinks it's a terrible movie. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, probably because he couldn't relate to the young Asian girl in Canada. Well, All he told me this. accurate to how I feel. Yeah, told me this off air. He was like, yeah, I, listen, I got nothing, no problem with one girl in a movie not even two but three oh no no thank you turning red and i thought that was weird because i was just like hey did you see morbius but that's that's just what his beliefs i don't know uh yeah so speaking of movies with one girl in it (laughs) (laughs) hey maybe like one and two fifths because of the one scene which one is that the oh, okay. right. The girl. nurse. Yeah, right? There's, there's yeah. two other. There's, there's the nurse in the one scene, and then there's the little patient in like two scenes. So, right, 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 right. Yes, that's right. So, yeah, and DJ, also, frankly, not a fan of this one either. Three, three girls. <laughs> well, that's frankly, I'm girl. not willing to give full credit as an entire character to any of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, did Morbius pass the Bechdel test? Probably not. Uh, and I don't think it passed any test. The only the only two women who talk to each other in the movie, I'm pretty sure, are the patient and the doctor, Dar- uh, Martine, and they're only talking about uh your uh Doctor Michael Morbius at your service. So no, damn, oh, damn, so close. They were both in the same room though, which is kind of honestly better than I was expecting for this movie. <laughs> I- Fair. 
Yeah. Uh, well, and the guys. important thing to remember is the really good thing about this movie is that it wasn't woke. No, it was not woke. It was it was very not woke. Uh, that was very funny. I, I do I do feel like that reactionary kind of I, I guess like YouTube because that looks like a YouTube thumbnail. That industry is just like it's got to be so. What's the word? Like it's so like performative to an extent that it's just like they must just go sit down and go all right i guess we gotta like morbius just isn't too woke i guess that's our favorite now and then they like make a video about it and that's gotta what be a, so painful yeah what a sad life yeah honestly like if you listen if any of you right-wing youtubers are out there right now who made a listening to us for some reason i really can't imagine we haven't driven you away by now uh yeah. but listen you gotta love yourself more than that you gotta love yeah. yourself more than having to pretend that Morbius is a good movie. Honestly, <laughs> this should be your rock bottom. It's not a good rock. Like it, it shouldn't be. But this movie is is quite poor. So you know, what if they did that? What if they made that movie? This movie to do that to like shake all the all the conservative YouTubers out of their existence and go, no, you see, too woke. Not always the ba- the worst thing in the world. Maybe Morbius is the worst thing in the world. <laughs> it's v- very possible. Uh, but you guys, yeah, we're gonna talk about Morbius, which is which oh is God, it's far too woke Morbius. as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's so woke that they gave the uh, well, he's not the only person of color, but the the like they gave Tyrese a subplot and then took it away. Did you guys hear about this? No. He has a I, robot yeah, arm. What? Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah, not wait, in wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's in the trailer. The robot arm's in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, I've seen pictures of it. I can't remember if it, it probably is in the trailer. Um, I, I saw the trailer so many goddamn times just like going to a movie. If you went true. to a movie between <laughs> November 2021 and, you know, right before Morbius, you saw the Morbius trailer at least 35 times. Like, yeah. It just, it, w- it was everywhere. <laughs> what was the song they used in that? Um, was it anything licensed? Oh, no, it was, it, oh. Sh- it was that one that's like, da 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 When you're a stranger. Yep, that's Yeah. Like, everyone's favorite. I like it when they do that in movies. I, they should do that more often. Use a popular song, but make it sound a little scary. Why haven't every trailer done that yet? Uh, not because they do. I, I feel like no there was strange. a trailer that came out today for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Badness, and they, they had a scary little song everyone get their tickets i sure as heck didn't i I didn't i I never get tickets ahead of time oh you'll never see it then diggins this is hotter than spider-man apparently it looks interesting i don't know i I got i got nothing bad to say about it so far but also they've you know they're i just know why it's so just on fire with these tickets i don't understand i think people saw this they need to (laughs) yeah they need something else you know they need to believe in something. Uh, They're like, what could a good one of these look like? Yeah. And, Let's uh, not go crazy before we see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying this is definitely judgment. it, but it's it can't be worse than this. Um, but we got to, uh, yeah, we got to talk about this movie. We'll, we'll get to the robot arm. Um, whew, Morbius, you guys, came out. Morbius. Michael week. Morbius. Michael, yeah, Michael Morbius. Classic comic character we all know and love. Oh, we're such mm-hmm. fans. I'll tell you this. I grew up reading every Morbius the Living Vampire comic. So my uh my book club, we were we were trying to figure out because we sometimes we'll do a book that's like kind of relevant where it's like, oh, like we did this last last month we did a Doctor Strange book, the month before we did a Moon Knight book, because it's like, oh I've never read this and the thing's coming out, so let's, you know, let's be good good to get up to speed. Right, um right. we did that, but like and we at the end of each book club, we go through the list of, like, what's coming out next month. So, like, next month, we're doing um, the Obi-Wan Kenobi book. It's, like, from the journals oh, cool. of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, it's supposed to be good. Um, but we were like, oh, yeah, Morbius is next month. Is there any good Morbius comic? What's the good one? And n- no one seems to have an answer to that question. <laughs> There's no, like, you know, the oath or, or you know, no definitive run of Morbius. They're all fine. It's very strange. Um, but yeah, you guys, we're talking about Morbius. We got Jared Leto as Dr. Michael Morbius. Matt Smith as a character named Milo. Uh, oh. And then others. Oh. Uh, directed by Daniel Espinoza. 
Uh, sure. Could yeah. have been anyone as far as I'm concerned. They directed that movie Safe House and that movie Life. Remember yeah, that? It was like Book Venom, but not. Oh, yeah. It was like space. There's a big monster in space or something, and it's kind yeah, of goo. Take your it? word for it. It was. It, it came out. Um, And then, uh, yeah, so you guys, I'm the IMDb's been today. Oh, my goodness. I will look at you. Power. I'm envious. Yeah, you are. Um, but <laughs> you guys, so, so for people that don't know, we're doing IMDb, B as in spelling B, as a, it's a game where DJ and Diggins, I believe DJ gets to choose if he goes first or it's not. It's actually Diggins. Uh, oh, Diggins, okay. Yes, I so yeah, they will week. get to guess the IMDb summary of uh, this movie. Uh, we don't know where this comes from. Sometimes it's right. Sometimes it's wrong. Sometimes they hyperfixate on some weird part of the movie. Sometimes <laughs> they more or less just kind of, kind of get it. Uh, so you never know. Um, but yeah, Diggin. So if you're in charge, would you like to go first, or would you like to kick? I'm gonna go first. All right. Uh, okay. Let me read it real quick. Hold on. Uh, okay. I think we got some. I think we got some keywords. I've, I, it's, this is gonna be a, an easy oh, one. Fun. Oh wow. Okay. All right. Uh, not like an easy one for you. Easy one for me. I get. Yeah, like, you figure you out a way. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, okay. Diggins, you can go first. A brilliant young Dr. Michael Morbius uh, searching for a cure for his rare and debilitating blood disease um, performs uh, morally dubious experiments with bats that result in him becoming a blood-drinking monster. Okay, DJ? I'm going to have to differentiate a little bit, but I think I got it. Um, uh, Dr. Michael Morbius, um, a brilliant doctor with a rare debilitating disease, must um, find a way to satiate his incredible bloodthirst after a terrible experiment goes wrong. I'm going to say, uh, this is tough, because neither of you really got it, uh, but I believe DJ did not call it a blood disease. He did not say oh, blood disease. He just said disease. disease. Yeah, so I think I have to give it to Diggins, because oh. that was the big differentiator. Neither of you got any of the other specifics, so congratulations, Diggins. Damn it. Uh, uh, I knew, I knew blood disease would carry me through. I was kind of wait. There were a couple of things. Um, like the one, the one thing to think is so interesting is uh, neither of you used the word vampire. Uh, <laughs> That's you true. You got cl- you both got close, but then pulled back as if that was like illegal to say in the IMDb <laughs> summary. Uh, can't, can't call the vampire. We were playing yeah, taboo. You gotta think, he has to have some sort of blood loss because he is a monster man. But um, <laughs> so you didn't you didn't get that and um. I was kind of I was excited for DJ because it seemed like DJ was going to get his profession, but he did not. Uh, he said, "Dr. Uh, Michael Morbius, a brilliant doctor." Oh so, shit! So here's here's we go. Biochemist Michael Morbius oh, tries to cure himself of a rare blood disease, but he inadvertently infects himself with a form of vampirism instead. Uh so yeah. It's not. I mean, he does cure himself. It's, it's not true. like. He's still sick, and also he has vampirism. It's true. Uh, I mean, it, it, to me, the way it's worded, it doesn't preclude the fact that he, you know, doesn't also cure himself. No, I think I, it I does, because it says he sits out to cure himself, but oh, develops yeah, vampirism right. instead, instead. Implying yeah. that the cure does not happen. I mean, yeah, that's that's true. Well, I mean, is vampirism a blood disease? Because he just says <laughs> he get a new blood disease. And then by the end, he still has one blood disease. Uh, I traded one blood disease for another. Yeah, you don't want one blood disease arguably better. Yeah, I feel like I mean, you know, as long as you got that fake blood, I'd be okay. I feel like there Uh, are many solutions that get kind of uh, nobody thinks of for some (laughs) reason, but we'll get there. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, so yeah. Um, you guys, Doctor Michael Morbius Diggins, because you won, you get to go first. What did you think? of this movie well guys gonna be honest with you here i wish this movie was worse <laughs> mm. all right yeah, yeah. i feel that That's not because it's not because it's not bad because it is a bad movie and you shouldn't watch it but no. 
It's also not a total disaster. It's just kind of not interesting and oh, oh, pretty clearly chopped up to the point where there's some stuff that really doesn't make sense. But mostly it's just very perfunctory. Very like, okay, so we're doing uh, anti-hero vampire monster origin story. So he does this, he does this, he does this. Then the bend, there's a big fight with him and the other man and that's it. We're done here. We'll wrap up before lunch. Like, it... Everything it does is the most obvious thing that it could do. <laughs> except for a few decisions that are, like, baffling because they don't make any sense or they don't logically follow from anything else that happened. But there are not enough of those and not crazy enough of those to become interesting in how bizarre it is. It's just a not very good movie that isn't trying to do anything but be a super generic anti-hero superhero movie. You know? It's just boring for the most part. Yeah. So, like, I yeah, agree. I mean, that's that's all I have to say about it. It's just boring. Just don't watch it. TJ, what about you? What do you think of Dr. Michael Morbius at your service? Uh, yeah, I agree with Dickens. I, <laughs> there are, like, some moments in the movie that are, like funny because it's so bad but that doesn't carry through for the movie through the movie like it would be much more enjoyable if that was the fact that against his point i would say um so i i can't talk about a movie without talking about my movie theater going experience unfortunately it was mostly empty so that certainly helped um but behind me there was a kid he's probably like um like eight or so it was actually like good kids like it was like well behaved like he just like did like the whoa when like something like like cool happened um and he came out of the movie like loving it like the mom asked him like so what'd you think and he was like eight out of ten so some random eight-year-old in my movie theater gave it an eight out of ten so i guess if you have an eight-year-old take your eight-year-old because they might like it you know weirdly dj in my theater there was also um an adult woman who afterwards the usher like coming into clean was asking her, I guess, you know, everyone's saying it's really bad. What did you think? She was like, I thought it was pretty good, actually. I don't know why so oh. many people don't like it. And I'm Look like, all right, that. lady, I don't think you and I saw the same movie, but you do you. <laughs> I mean, and I get why the eight year old liked it, right? Like it's, it's flashy enough that it could trick a child to being like, what a cool movie, right? I, I cannot speak to the woman in your movie theater, Diggins. I don't know. So, uh, I, I didn't stick around to, to have, have a full conversation with her about it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's a flashy movie that's bad, and Jared Leto's bad, but I don't think it's his fault. It's probably like the bad writing and everything. Um, well, there's at least good, there's at least one thing that's his fault. That, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, oh, one other thing. And we'll talk about it. Because this movie is just like a Venom retread, it's like, God, this movie's just a cash grab. So then it's like sad because the movie's just a cash grab and that's that sucks. So fuck you, Sony. Um, just make more Spider-Verses or whatever if you want. Just unlimited money, you pieces of garbage. So yeah, those are my thoughts on like Dr. Michael Morbius, the living vampire. This movie is bad. Don't anyone go see it. Maybe your eight-year-old will like it. Well, that is what they changed the line to because it... For oh, people okay. that don't know, that line is not in the movie, so they changed it to that, which is weird because either your eight year old is already there, or they're not. So, right, it's weird that you would advertise it, but I guess it's like, listen, I know you're not enjoying this movie that you're watching right now, but maybe your eight year old will. So come back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's fair. Uh, it's good to like micro target, so like people who want to see it will be there. Yeah, like if they said like something like that in the in the thing, like, hey, Jennifer. You should invite Adam to this movie. You'd probably get some Adams that would come yeah, to it. Yeah, it's true. You know? Selling some tickets. Can't hurt. Uh, uh yeah, the movie's not good. Uh it's what did very you bad. Think, Ando? It stinks. That's what I yeah. think. Yeah. I think it stinks. I would say this. This is my big I had two big thoughts coming out of it. We'll get to the other one later because it's a spoiler. Uh and I and I think it's fascinating. I feel like that's where we'll spend most of our time. But the other one is like, hey, listen, I understand when people are like, Disney shouldn't own anything, everything. Disney should be the only company. Man, that's not, that's, a, that, I agree. But if the other companies want to do that, you got to make better stuff than this. Like, <laughs> this is, this is a really bad case for like studios that aren't Disney should just be able to make movies because they should. It's true. But it'd be nice if they were better. Like, obviously, Spider-Verse is great. The DC ones are kind of hit or miss. But like, if this is the competition, yeah, not not great. Uh, 
Yeah, it stinks. I think Jared Leto's bad in it. I think Matt Smith is trying to do something a little bit. So I didn't, I didn't quite hate him as much. doing a lot, but there's yeah. only so much. And I don't think it ever really coalesces for me around like something that works but no, I, I don't think the, yeah the i don't hate it works at all but i don't think it's matt smith's fault yeah uh and then the other people in the movie are are also there yeah the the beats are very venom it's venom, venom yeah venom, it's, venom, it's like sometimes venom. the cgi is kind of cool i guess like I, I didn't hate his vampire face in general the design of the character is not the worst thing but a lot of the effects were lame uh and that's to say uh, you know if you worked on it, good, you know, sorry that I said that, but like, sorry, you missed your families. That was probably a bummer that you and didn't that see too, your families I hope you got paid, but, and it's, you know, it's CGI worse, so probably not. But if you did, then that's great. And I'm sure the problem with it was a big director and like a, you know, it's more just uncreative on a, on a big picture level. Yeah. I will say uh, the the final fight in this one is the most incomprehensible one of these I think I've ever seen. Like <laughs> yeah, at, at no point did I have any idea what was physically happening. It was insane. There were bits like I think one of the things they did like so there's so there how many fight scenes are there even like two and a half maybe Something like that, yeah. yeah yeah so like. The first one on the cargo ship, I'm like, eh, this ain't terrible. This is kind of like what you'd expect from something like this. And, you know, there was all that kind of speed up, slow down stuff to, like, show you what was happening. It felt like they did that a little bit in the, in the last fight, I think. But it felt like they picked random moments to speed up and slow down that didn't really help me understand what was going on. It was just like, look at that. That's Morpheus, yeah. baby. And his good friend Milo. Cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not good movie. Um... I I don't even know what else to say. This is exactly what I expected from the trailers and stuff. And like never has a movie been more like just you see the trailer and you're like, I think I get it. And he did. I don't think any of the other performances were good. I think Tyrese was probably pr- not good. Um, I mean, I, I and- think they're, they're fine performances, but they're, they're fine performances of extremely flat characters. So yeah. there's just, Unless you're really bringing your own personality to it, which is kind of what Matt Smith ended up doing. It's like, if mm-hmm. you're just doing an average job, then the character's boring because there's nothing to the actual character. It is pretty funny, too, like, how much stuff was cut out of this movie. Like, we were talking about Robot <laughs> Arm and, uh, obviously all the references to Spider-Man that they put in the trailer to trick you. Uh, it's cr- crazy. I was going to say, Nando, able to do that. It's funny that you say that, like, You see the trailer and, like, you get what this movie is when, like, so much of the trailer isn't in this movie. Yeah. Like, 90% of it. Yeah. I was, there was one scene I was waiting for. It was, um, who's, who's the guy that plays the, um, Jared Harris, right? Yes. 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 And he goes, like, in the trailer. I don't even think you see who he says it to, but he's on, like, a park branch. He's like, do you think you can control it? And I'm like, mm. man, when does that happen? <laughs> yeah. And it turns out never. It yeah, never happens. Never. Yeah, that Ugh. character was also just like a nothing character. An insane uh, transition, by the way. Like some like some fan four stick levels of like, he is old now kind of stuff going on here with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he goes from one scene to the next scene and so much time passes and he's pretty much the same. Wild. I don't like yeah, bad de-aging, like, so that's not a good way to do it, but it's insane. Do do something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's supposed to be like 20 years later and he's exactly the same. Give yeah. him white and, hair, I don't care. Like, and he wasn't even that young in the first place. Like he was definitely like mid 30s at the youngest in that first yeah. scene. Yeah. It was really weird. Uh yeah, I don't know. What are we talking? What's I don't know. You know what else was bad about this movie? It, it, the non-linear like storytelling in the beginning of it. Yeah. Oh, it was so reason. bad. Oh my! I I want to tell you my exact experience, which is it opens. Let's hear it. Please. It opens with the the scene you see in the trailers where he gets airlifted to uh, Cerro de la Muerta in Costa Rica, right? Uh, yeah. Which I'm. Not sure is a real place, but whatever. I mean, they changed their name now anyway to avoid being connected to this movie. <laughs> probably something else. So you probably can't find it on a map either way. Uh, rego- oh no, it's a real mountain in Costa Rica. Look at that. 
Oh, good, good for them, I guess. Uh, Anyway, being airlifted there, doing his little thing to catch the bats, really not adequately warning the people he hired to bring him here about what was about to happen, felt very rude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's kind of his deal. Maybe that was what Jared Leto brought to the performance. Right, and I was, and I was going, oh, huh, we're really just jumping right into it, huh? Well, good for the movie, you know. <laughs> I, I don't think I needed a long backstory about when he, how he got to this point. We can just have a couple scenes. Maybe he says something to someone or something while he's doing his experiments. Yeah, let's just jump right into it. This is a good decision. Uh, and then twenty five years earlier, and I'm like, oh, it was one of those. Hmm. Yeah, but it's yep. weird because it's not an action scene either. Like. If you started with the cargo ship thing, I would understand the way it's like, well, you got to start with an action scene because that tricks people into thinking the movie is cool. Um, but it's also a pretty boring scene. So I don't understand. I I don't get it. I think you I think you could do the same thing. Start with the cargo ship scene, mystery stuff going on. It's like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then you flash back and just go linear from that point on. But yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. It's a really weird then- choice. And then the fl- the 25 years earlier flashback is also told in this really weird nonlinear fashion that made it not make a lot of sense. Yeah. So, yeah. What is... Wh- so, okay. So, Dr. Michael Morbius, child doctor, but not doctor, but child Michael Morbius lives in yeah. a orphanage or hospital? What is, where I are a, they? I think it's like a private hospital. Yeah. Okay. Uh and he is being treated by Jared Harris's character, who is named Nicholas. Emil, mm-hmm. Dr. Emil Nicholas. Uh, and then I feel like maybe that immediately it's like, oh, here's the new boy, Milo. And that's Matt Smith, little baby Matt Smith. Yep. Mm-hmm. Except he's like, not Milo. He's Lucian. But the young baby Michael Morbius calls all of his uh, bunk mates or whatever you want to call it. uh Milo, because the first one was named Milo, and he doesn't bother learning their names because of how fast they die. But also, everyone with this mysterious blood disease seems to live a long time, actually. Yeah. So, like, rude, but... Horrible. That's the meanest thing I've ever seen in a movie. (laughs) Like, to tell a child that they are going to die pretty quickly. By saying, like, I'm not gonna call you your name. The fuck? And he's the good guy? Insane. But then they become fast friends. Fast friends. And by that, you mean there's a flash forward scene where they're friends now. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? What is the blood disease? If, if you had to guess, is the blood disease like analogous to a regular, like a disease that exists in our world? So here's the thing. It's like the the property of the bats that he says would cure them is the anticoagulant element of their saliva, right? Mm-hmm. So I... I mean, that would say to me that it's like some predisposition to blood clotting or something that right. they have, but that wouldn't really explain their symptoms or why they need constant blood transfusions, because that's a different thing. And also blood thinners already exist and could <laughs> be taken to Not deal with that problem. Not in the first, they don't. No, no, no. So, yeah, like, I don't maybe. understand what could possibly be causing his symptoms and also require anticoagulant dna to be inserted into your genetics yes i don't know i feel like i it yeah it's weird because they do live for a while with this disease yeah they they talk constantly about how they're going to die any minute now but they all seem like certainly sick they seem ill but they live for like we said like 25 years and seem like they could probably keep going on as they are for a while it's gonna happen any day now just you watch yeah, their their main things that you would kind of recognize, like the things that you that they show are like they're kind of thin, uh, so they can be jacked as superheroes. But then <laughs> there's that. I feel like they gave the kids a lot of eye makeup and like a lot of. Did you guys notice that? Yeah, yeah. They kind of yeah. look like that kid who likes turtles at the zoo. Um, <laughs> like, and then they also walk with like, um, what are those called? Yeah. Like, well, Milo uses, like, a cane. Yeah. That's, like, his deal. And, like, Morbius has crutches, right? No, I think, Mi- I think y- young Milo has crutches. Uh, Matt Smith Milo has a cane. Uh, right, I don't okay. think young Michael Morbius uses anything. But then... I don't know. Uh, 
adult Michael Morbius has those kind of like walking stick crutches. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. Some disease. It's whatever. It's a blood disease. It's not good. You don't want it. No, not good at all. But then Morbius, Dr. Michael Morbius, or at that point, child Michael Morbius, because he does good on his tests, goes <sighs> to a boarding school for gifted youngsters. Now, I was like, they're not gonna. And they don't, but he just goes to a different school and leaves little Milo. Um, but when they said, yeah, when they said like gifted children, I was very, I was very excited for them to also kind of hint at X-Men <laughs> like the, um, like Venom 2 did actually. They'd be like, that? like Dr. Nicholas would be there. Don't worry, uh, Michael, this, uh, I'm a personal friend of Professor Xavier and I know he'll treat you very well. Yeah. Uh, but, um, I guess it wouldn't make sense cause he doesn't have any superpowers. Just has blood disease and he's kind of clever. Yeah. So, also the reason what he does that gets the attention of Doctor Nicholas and convinces him to send him to this gifted oh, boarding school yeah. is that uh, Lucian's uh, or Milo's. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's blood transfusion machine or something. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Starts malfunctioning, and Lucian like immediately starts dying. So that's he, how that works. Yeah, you know so, the machine goes, you just like start dying. Yeah, immediately. Uh, so Dr. Michael Morbius, although he's not a doctor yet because he's a child, uh, pries it open and fixes it with a ballpoint pen, which is certainly impressive. Really, more of an engineering thing than like a doctor thing. Yeah, right. Because he's it's just a fixing this thing. You know, he's fixing a it's machine. A Maybe that's what's always been the problem with this artificial blood. The machine that makes it is bad. So he needs to go and be. tune it up with his springs and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> he just put the ballpoint pen spring inside the artificial blood machine. That, what if that was like his only trick? Like every yeah, time someone really calls funny. him in for a consultation, he's like, hmm, I don't know, doctor. Have you tried putting a ballpoint pen spring inside the patient? <laughs> yeah, just like every every scene of him doing science in his lab would just be him looking at a pen and then like taking two pens and comparing them to each other. And then one pen <laughs> goes on a in like a box and then the box goes gets red light and he takes that pen and throws it in the trash with all the other pens <laughs> and he's like chewing on a pen too and he throws that in the trash because he's, like, he's so cavalier um yeah i don't know but yeah definitely not necessarily a biology thing but, but i guess that also was i feel like future specialization yeah and morbius says that like he's I, I feel like maybe as a kid he says like i'm gonna cure our disease one day right or something like that I think on his goodbye letter to Milo, he's yeah. like, I'm going to cure us. Yeah. And Dr. Michael Morbius, what is his one trait? His one, like, characterization thingy? He he's makes rude. paper origami. <laughs> That's true. He is rude, but yeah, he also likes origami. He's the origami killer from Heavy Rain. <laughs> Go catch that guy. That's true. Uh, excuse you. If it's from Heavy Rain, then he's the origami killer. Yeah. Or- <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so... Then time flashes forward. Dr. Michael Morbius is winning wait, wait, some wait. sort of award, right? First, we got to talk about my favorite thing in a movie, which is inexplicable childhood bullies. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. These fucking kids, dude. So Ugh. what is their deal? So they, they, this becomes significant later. Like at the beginning, you can see there's like school kids at the school across the way from their hospital that... Or like looking at the window and be like, look at the freaks. <laughs> and uh, Michael Morbius says to young Milo, you know, we're like the Spartans, the few against the many. Oh. Which, sure, whatever. But my thing is, like, yeah, kids can be really horrible, especially to each other, and can make fun of you for a lot of stuff. I I feel like a hospital full of deathly ill children... <laughs> The way you're, the way a child is bad to them is not like calling them freaks and trying to beat them up. It's being like, oh no, I'm going to catch what they have. I don't want to be near them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this would make sense in a movie like, like in an X-Men situation where they also look strange or something. Mm-hmm. Like they grow, I don't know, big old ears or something and then the kids are like ew freak but yeah they just look like sick children yeah it's just i don't i feel i just i don't know and i mean maybe they do exist out there maybe this sort of thing happens all the time but i just have trouble imagining that 
There are childhood bullies out there whose main target is like, yeah, I want to go find the kids who are on the verge of death and make fun of them and then beat them up. They, they need to be taken down a peg. They've had it too good for too long. It reminds me of Shazam, where the bullies hit that kid with his car, with, with their car. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Diggs, you love Shazam. You remember that? Uh, Yeah, actually. You probably I watched it that. this week. It's, yeah, I watch yeah. it every day. It's also the kid with crutches. They hit him with the, yeah. They just hate those kids. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been a kid in a while, like a like a child. So I guess I would have been, though, during the time when these kids were children. So I would have noticed it in the Morbius timeline. So, yeah, it wasn't a thing that I saw, uh, but I didn't live next to any blood disease like hospitals. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, maybe, yeah, maybe if you grow up next to the blood disease hospital, you get used to the blood disease kids and then you just bully them like you do any other yep. kid. Or maybe Dr. Michael Morbius... It, at child Michael Morbius, it has just been a dick to these kids. Like <laughs> very possible, they tried to be. We nice. don't know the backstory. It's true. Yeah, yeah they like kicked their soccer ball over to him. And they're like, "Hey, can you throw that back to us." And he like popped it with one of his pens and then threw it in the trash. And then they were like, "Man, I guess these kids are evil." And Matt Smith's <laughs> guy just kind of inherited all of that hate. Michael Morbius left, and uh, yeah, maybe that's what Michael, it was. Maybe Michael Morbius is the origami killer. Well, and you that's know, like what all this is. You know what Tupac said: "The hate you give, uh, little children, f's everyone." That's true. So wise. Yep. <laughs> yeah. The uh, <laughs> the um, yeah. And then then we get then we get older. The movie flashes forward. It's insane that they choose to put a scene with Jared Harris in that first flash forward because that's it's true. I think if it wasn't like that, it wouldn't be so jarring. But it is like the next thing we see is him is him at the award ceremony uh, where Dr. Now, Michael Morbius at your service, is winning an award for good old good blood stuff. Now, I mean, what, artificial what, blood, which what is, award is he winning? More lives than the yeah, artificial the peace prize. Bl- artificial blood would be. An, well, not the peace prize, but artificial blood would We're be an incredible Nobel advancement prize. that would save inc- like tons and tons of lives because then we wouldn't rely on donors anymore. Uh, also, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, DJ, uh, you said it was the Nobel Prize, which is the correct name for it. But in this movie, yeah. I think you'll find that everyone calls it the Nobel Prize. <laughs> yeah. I didn't catch that today, really. Again, and in the Morbius time- verse, it is Dr. Al Nobel, like he made it. so Or no, Nobel. No. Dr. Guy. Alfred Noble. Yeah, different guy. Yeah. Yeah, no, every, every time someone says the name of the prize out loud, they say Nobel, not Nobel. I totally missed that. Oh, yeah. this movie's great. It's great. Um, yeah. So he has made artificial blood, and it's a it's a big deal. I want to win a Nobel Prize. I mean, have you made? Well, you know, have you tried? <laughs> you know what they say: play noble games, win noble prizes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. The uh, yeah, that's like a thing that happens in movies a lot, right? Where they get a Nobel Prize or something, and then that's your like introduction to the guy. Iron Man did that. Yeah. That's like a really easy way to just be like, he's a great scientist. Everyone knows who he is. Here's the they also gave him all his accolades. Like, he was a doctor at 19, and he, yeah. you know, saved all this, and this, like, this. He's so great. You could kind of turns- use this to skip all the childhood stuff, too. Be like, he oh, was absolutely. a childhood guy. But they don't. But then how would we know about Milo? Yeah. But uh, it turns out that Dr. Michael Morbius, even though he actually did come all the way to the ceremony, has decided to pull a Bob Dylan. (laughs) (laughs) Is that what Bob Dylan did? He just declined the prize. He he didn't show up at the ceremony or anything. Yeah. Why do, what, what is, like, that was the weird part about that and kind of how it reminded me of Iron Man. Because Iron Man gets an introduction, too. And then it's like, oh, he's just, he's, you know, shooting craps at the Caesar's Palace. But yeah, Morbius is both there, but then also they want to show that he's so cool that he's like, actually wants to help his his children instead. So that's weird. So yeah, you'd think, you know, you have him, so you have him at this Nobel Prize ceremony where he is about to give a speech uh, after we've been told what his accomplishments are. And you think, ah, a speech where he declines the prize. What a great way to introduce us to his uh, cantankerous personality and let us know something about who this character is. 
and what motivates him. No, we don't see the speech. We just cut to him at the hospital. Yeah. Yep. If I didn't know better, I'd think he didn't get the spe- didn't do the speech at all. I would think this is one of those scenes, like I remember, where he just wasn't there, and he's at the hospital instead because he loves the kids. But yeah, they didn't do that. You know, because of that, he, he's very visibly at the ceremony. Gets up to give a speech, and then we just yeah. cut to later. Don't get to hear the speech. We just hear one line from it when the one woman uh, in the movie who has more than <laughs> three lines, let's say. Uh-huh. Uh, comes up and is like, you were in big trouble for doing the, the bad thing at the Nobel Prize ceremony. And then it never comes up again because nobody actually cares. Yep. Uh-huh. It's funny it's because... <laughs> no, you go, you go. Yeah. I was going to say, they need that goddamn money. But the thing you know, is, <laughs> all his funding comes from his friend Milo, who doesn't care about but, his winning a Nobel exactly, Prize. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Also, why uh, is Milo rich? Oh, think, pff, who knows? I think at some point, I don't know. I kind of assumed he was a rich lawyer. Uh, it's probably not true, though. That's probably Does a lie. Come he told. from money? Is that like we're, what we're supposed to believe? I guess they never I say. They I mean, and he says he never passed the bar or never finished law school, so he can't be a lawyer. That's true. Uh, vampire stuff? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it just because he is British? Yeah. Like, is that, you know, sometimes Maybe you just residuals get money from, from Doctor Who or something, you know? <laughs> or from Terminator Salvation or from Star Wars. I think he got in that and then got cut out or something. Or from, uh, uh, what was the Edgar Wright movie last year? Oh, yeah. The Last Night in Soho. Yeah, from Last Night in Soho Wing. Yeah. He's, uh, I mean, he, you know, he could be an actor. I mean, at certain points in the movie, you would yeah, that would be a reasonable way for him to make money. But yeah, I guess, does he just inherit Nicholas's money? Kind well, of? He, can't, he can't have inherited Nicholas's money because Nicholas is still alive. Right, but like, has Nicholas just like adopted him, maybe? He seems to have abandoned his actual hospital where he cared for all of the blood disease children and now pretty much only worries about Milo. Yeah, so maybe that's those, what well, it is. those kids are fine. They're, it's it's all good. Well, they all got every, if you're not a plot day, important so. child with the blood disease, then you just die like that. You know, it's like one two yeah. months tops. And uh, Doctor Michael Morbius, yeah, he is like he is nice to this one little girl, mm-hmm. and that's the one time he's nice in the movie. I would say, and yeah, it's I... way too late after he's already been a dick. <laughs> for your like little save the cat moment. Uh, yeah, movie's bad. Um, then what I have a happens? Question. I, yeah? Uh, so I have a quick question. Okay. So, like, we... I think that at some point in the sequence, if I have it right, it's like, he has his, like, lady doctor friend, and, you know, he's talking about how, like, his research where he's gonna save everybody, and he has all his bats, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is the only way we know I, this is after the opening scene, is because we eventually see all the bats. Right. right. So, he, like, captured the bats, or whatever, right? How? Yeah, yeah, that's How what I was gonna ca- ask. We see he sets okay, up cool, this, cool, cool. He sets up this little trap thing that seems yeah. like it's gonna capture the bats, and then he cuts open mm-hmm. his hand to attract the bats with his blood, and then they fly through the trap thing perfectly fine and attack the helicopter. Um, yes, and is implied this is an especially vicious and deadly species of bat that will like kill people. So yeah, how did any of them get out of that situation? Like, what is the thing that he puts his hand through? Like, what is that contraption? I don't know. I right when they did that in the well, the first time I saw that in the trailer, very it was very strange. It almost seemed like like this was some sort of like Indiana Jonesy like ancient temple bullshit. But it was yep. too modern even for that. There, who it had to be aliens or or something. Um, that that put that there. I'm also very confused about that. Well, no, he, I think he brought that. That was his, like, yeah. high-tech trap to capture the bats. Right. You're saying when you first saw it in the trailer, Nancy, yeah, yeah. it was like, yeah. Like, yeah. I was just like, what the fuck is this? Like, it seems like in the trailer he went to this place and- And thing, that was there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I just have to, to, to use the thing, the magic, I don't know, window, not window, but like the, you know, thing. Um, screen or whatever. Yeah. I, I will say, very brave of him with a uh, blood disease, just like cut his hand open. Like, he could have brought a vial of blood or something. You know, it's just like. That would be cut. what a normal man would do, but not Dr. Michael Jared Little Morbius. <laughs> he takes himself <laughs> way too seriously, uh, as is, you know, much like his uh, actor counterpart. Also, we haven't talked about this. Jared Leto, 
really annoying on set, apparently. You guys saw the interview? <laughs> Is that news? Yeah. Like, there's a news you put that... Well, there's, like, a, yes. there's a blanket statement. There's a, there's specific, a specific thing, thing he did. did. Yeah. Oh, okay. That will go on my wall of Kingsman newspapers of, like, things behind <laughs> me that Jared Leto has did annoyingly. Uh, this one is he made them... He he, <laughs> he walked with, a, with the crutches. He said, like, he had to do that. Um, okay. But it took him so long between takes to, like, go to the bathroom because he did it really, like, because he, he's so committed. It's such a cool He Daniel day lewis it. That they needed to get him a wheelchair to take him as like a compromise. Like, oh, this fucking guy's taking 20 minutes to go to the bathroom. I'll just Are you serious? Wheelchair. Yeah. That's Dude, what they fuck, said they did. Fuck this guy, man. Yeah, he's awful. Um, I, like, love, I love in the interview where the director confirmed that. The interview after that just goes, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the director feels the need to kind of explain further after that. <laughs> Like, being very diplomatic, being like, oh, you know, it's people's processes. Yeah, I, I try not to question the actors, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's, all the interviews the director has been given have been very diplomatic in how he yeah. doesn't say things like, yeah, the studio forced us to do that. It's a bunch of bullshit, I know. But that's clearly what he <laughs> wants to say. Mm -hmm. Well, because he, he's got to do the sequel, right? Like, he can't he can't shit on them too hard. Yeah, he's got to do, yeah. do Torbius. Torbius. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it seems like I, I would not blame this director for the movie bad. I wouldn't say, like, I don't want to be like a, you know, oh, there was a great movie here that they cut up and ruined. But yeah, it must be a nightmare to work with Jared Leto and to try to, like, this guy has two hit movies or not. Well, I mean, you know, big movies with Ryan Reynolds and like other actors that I assume are normal people. And then you get Jared Leto. And he's like, I want to walk with a cane. And you're like, oh, God, this is what we're doing. You know, like, terrible. Also, like, for the, for, like, the vampire movie, right? Like, I get, like, when Daniel Day-Lewis wants to, like, really get into a thing. It's, it's usually, like, it's not, like, a superhero. It's, like, at least even if it's fiction in the realm of possibility of a person who might have existed. But, like, Jared Leto, did you also just, like, oh, I can only drink this sweet, sweet blood part of my process, you know? Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, fuck. Ugh. And, like, the crutches thing, it's not a huge part of the movie. That's it's not too. like Lincoln where he's Lincoln the whole movie. Right. And it's like, you better get this right. It's like he walks around with crutches maybe three times a lot. Like, enough that you would need to be able to do it. But then he's not doing that anymore. Yeah. Really, just so annoying. Um, yeah. Uh, and his bat vat thing. What the fuck uh -huh, is that? Yes. I don't know. Cause I, it's it's bat crazy. Full of bats. Like, after, like, so I know I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but just because I feel like this is very, like, yeah. it, 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 stupid or whatever. But, like, he goes into the bat vat and he's like, it's like I have a kinship with these creatures. Like I wanted him to say, almost like as if I were some kind of Batman. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> these creatures I'm, seem to know how I feel and understand me. I'm so upset that in the the superpower rundown, when he's just going over, here's all my sick powers. Uh, they changed it from some form yeah. of Bat Raider, apparently, yeah, uh, to I have echolocation, which is a kind of Bat Radar. <laughs> yeah. Remember when he tags on to, like to that like for the uninitiated? Like fuck you, bro. Yeah. In case yeah. you weren't doing no, it's a bat radar. Also, who are you what? talking to? He's making me. medical notes for when they find his dead body cuz he, you know, He's talking to me died and you. from this terrible experiment. Well, and like I just the thing with the bat vat, for people that haven't seen it, this I I think this is in most of the trailers, so you can it's I'm sure it's easy to find. It's the size of like, I don't know, a big refrigerator. That, and it goes up to the <laughs> ceiling, so it's tall. Yeah. It's and there's way too many bats in it. Mm -hmm. Seems like yeah. those bats are having a horrible time. <laughs> there's yeah, no way for them to sit. They're like carnivorous bats. They're blood drinking bats. That's the whole point. So like yeah. What is he feeding them? Yeah. Each other. Ah! I think so. Yeah, there's probably like there are probably a thousand bats in there, and these are the bats that remain. But, <laughs> yeah, like I feel like I've gone to like the you know um which which zoo has it? Is it the Bronx Zoo has the bat stuff in it? Like the I do not know. I don't know. One of the New zoo York has zoos some kind of bat stuff. Okay, yeah, sure. Has like a big bat enclosure, and it's like you walk through it, and it's dark, and it's kind of right, cool. right. Way fewer bats in a much larger space. 
Like, it's really fucked up. And he took all of the bats. I feel like you could get what you need with 20 bats. Well, like, and what's so dumb about this movie is, like, so, like, Dick, I see, like, your point. Like, it feels like the movie's, like, not going to overexplain. Like, oh, great. It's going to, like, treat me like an intelligent person. You don't need to overexplain. But, like, it underexplains, like, the parts where, like, you might want to know. Like, what he's trying to do with his big experiment that is, like, the crux of the whole movie, they just kind of gloss over, like, how it works. It's like, well, eventually we got a vial, and I'm going to inject the vial into me, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, and then it over-explains afterwards. He's like, uh, I can survive off of this kind of blood for precisely four hours and 23 yeah. minutes. Yeah. But if I have this other kind of blood, then I can survive for six hours and 17 minutes. It's like, okay, I don't care. And there's no ticking clock. There's no, like, the moon's going to crash in three days. So, you know, we got to make sure. Oh, that should have been There's no ticking clock in this movie. The moon would be bad for, or no, the moon really doesn't have an effect on vampires, I guess. Maybe like creatures of the night. I don't know. Maybe that would make Moon Knight stronger. He would be able to kill Dr. Michael Morbius if the moon (laughs) was closer. Yeah. Sometimes he has moon powers. It's, it's such a good point where it's like they somehow – it's the worst of both worlds. They underemphasize the parts you might want to know more about and they overemphasize like the silly redundant points. And it's like, yeah, I got it or this doesn't matter. Yeah, and every character is doing this too. Like – Yeah. It's not like they bring in the, the two investigators who are Agent Rodriguez and Agent Simon Stroud uh, who are investigating Morbius crimes – and it's their job to, like, tell us some of these things. Yeah. They're telling us I, things that we watched. I, I must assume that, like, their parts were cut from the movie, much like Tyrese's robot arm. I guess so, yeah. It's it, feels really, like, so, really it feels like we're watching less than half of the movie that was made. Oh, for it's sure. True. But only the exposition parts. <laughs> like, they cut out all the stuff that happens, but they left in all their exposition. Uh, oh, so much goddamn exposition. It's bad. Uh, yeah, so then he goes and does his murders. Get the first Morbius thing. What'd you guys think of that? Uh, so this is on the boat. So they're on a boat with... Okay, so they're on the boat with, like, mercenaries for hire who are there to, like, why are they there? Why are these guys on the boat? That's what I was going to say. It's like, yeah, so they've gone into out of international waters because their experiments are so, like, illegal and ethically dubious that they can't do them in the country even though i'm pretty sure it's still illegal so it's not like it's a get out of jail free card where it's like you were committing horrific experiments again like crimes against humanity it was like ah but i did them in international (laughs) waters that means that i can't be arrested it's not really how that one can try me or i don't know like i guess like what court would try that the is there like an international waters court that tries such crimes? And international I'm... waters is not that far. Like, it seems like if Jared Harris's guy is loaded, you could easily just get a yacht. They don't need that much stuff. You just need the, the chair and yeah. the injecting stuff and probably some, you know, stuff to monitor his heart and whatever. But <laughs> That's like, true. It's not that big of a thing. This boat is much bigger than what it needs. And again, this would have been a good thing for explaining, right? So fucking uh, uh, Jared, Jared Leto goes to like Milo. This is like right before they get on the boat, right? Because uh, Jared Leto's like, I, I, I need to pitch Milo on this because he's my rich friend with money. Right. He's like, I'm going to need a bunch of mercenaries, this kind of equipment, and a boat on international water. And it's like, well, maybe the boat was that big because it's like a front, right? It's It's a freight you know, ship that has yeah. other things. Like no one will notice if like there's experiments going on. But they don't say that. Right. Like, at no point is it like, that's why there's a boat this big, right? It's like, yeah. and there's, <laughs> it, it just is set pieces and scenes for reasons. And, yeah, and yeah, for the mercenaries, like, what do, they, what do they think they're going to need to protect themselves against? It's not like they go way out, like, off the coast of Somalia, where there are actual pirates or something. Yeah, they're, right? They're still off the coast of New York. They're on the eastern seaboard. Like, Yeah, the boat just <laughs> floats in. <laughs> Right or something like they yeah, yeah, the yeah. boat. It, it floats back to Long Island Harbor. Yeah, it's like yeah. what do you think is going to happen that you need eight guys with guns to protect you from? I mean, to be fair, Long Island dodgy <laughs> at best. Mm-hmm. It could, I it mean, could I, float, float it to like Staten Island. Then we're in real trouble. Oh yeah, I think maybe the guns are for themselves. If they end up trapped on Staten Island, you know, it's just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you'd rather just end it there. Take the coward's way out of Staten Island. <laughs> yeah, that $8 bridge. It's, 
<laughs> it's the ferry or the bullet. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, or, yeah, I, I see, here's what I thought watching this movie. It kind of yeah. seems like they got the order of the scenes wrong a little bit. Or, like, they added scenes that they didn't need. Because, like, I can see a version of this movie where the order of operations is baby stuff. You don't really need it, but it's there, whatever. Um, Gets the award, does some experiments on regular bats or something. Mm-hmm. Then goes, yeah. we need to get the special bats. Gets on the freight train, goes to, where was it, Costa Rica? Yeah. Or fr- it gets on the freight boat, helicopter, Costa Rica, back on the helicopter, back on the boat, same mercenaries. Now he's got new bats, but he's also doing the experiment on the way home because he's in international waters. And then that's why the mercenaries are there. Are they the same guys? Well, oh, what? no, 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 because I feel like the, the ones earlier were, like, natives, right? Like, they knew what was going on. I feel like there were some that didn't, some that didn't. Maybe. I, I don't know, man. They, like, the threads of this movie are so hard to follow. Like, I wondered, Anna, that's actually, like, an like a, a intriguing question. Is this movie better if, like, they spend more time with, like, Michael Morbius really trying to crack this disease? And, like, that's, like, half the movie... It's still the same amount of time, but then, like, the other half is, like, Michael Morbius just, like, you know, much more streamlined being Morbius and kind of figuring it out. Like, I don't know if it makes it more, like, compelling, maybe? I don't, I don't know. I feel like it's not necessarily that I need more of any given thing. It's that... Morbius? What what they have chosen to emphasize at every moment feels like the wrong thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. Like... Yeah, it's so it's so weird how much time like how how time is spent and then how it's like yeah and then we're on a we're on a ship container ship and that's where the big fight happens because that's kind of what happens in other movies like this like because this scene reminds me I'm sure everyone of Batman Begins where he, Batman is fighting those guys and then there's like a on a big ship not on a ship but like in a container he turn yeah. people like run around turning corners and then Batman's getting them. Um, oh, but, we'll talk about that scene in here. Oh, yeah, oh and then wow. yeah, it's it's just so strange. This movie stinks. Um, oh, wait, love- that is that that is that scene like on the boat where it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, dude, that was. I thought you were talking about the other Batman Begins thing that people. There is another one. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's oh, it's so fucked, man. Um, I love. It's not even cool. Also, not even I- cool. It's it's fine. I think of the action scenes in this movie, it's probably the best one. But it's not yes. doing anything like special, you know. No, not it's, at all. It's it's very basic uh, horror movie esque. Uh, there's a monster haunting these people and picking them off one by one, sort of stuff. It's fine. But I love that. Bef- right before he goes all vampire and attacks everybody after receiving his injection. Um, yeah. We have the one person who show up to check in on them. And we got to make sure to have him be a huge asshole oh, for God. no oh. reason so that we're yeah. not too upset when they all die, I guess. Like, he's just being a huge dick to, to Martine, uh, Dr. Bancroft, if you will. Yeah. Uh, Bancroft? The Bancroft? Yeah, the Dr. Martine Bancroft. Bancroft, everyone's favorite comic book character. Uh, <laughs> Do you yeah, think just, she had just, a robot arm we didn't see? Maybe. Oh, God. Maybe they it all could do. be. Well, yeah. well, Nando, perhaps at the end, there's maybe some sort of hint about things in Dr. Martin Bancroft's future. Mm. 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 Hopefully not, because there's no more of these movies, I hope. Yeah, that's true. They'll find a way. Uh, so, so, yeah, so the, 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 they have the guy be a huge jackass. So, like, his, his death gets to be justified. You know, maybe he has a family. Who cares? We're just going to murder him, all these you know, people so bad. hardcore. <laughs> Um, I have a question for you guys. Yep. The little trails that follow Morbius, or like both vampires eventually, when they're like jumping around. What'd you think of those? I did not care for them. I didn't they were love very it, silly. but I didn't hate it too much either. Really? Okay. It felt almost like an art, like a like an artistic ch- choice as opposed to like kind of a, almost like a lazy, like let's put some fucking lines. I don't know. Doesn't look that good. <laughs> Do lines. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't love it. I think it gets much worse when there's two vampires in the same fight. Yes, uh, yes. so yeah, I think, I think a lot of it comes like, it's like, it'll, the, the rest of the thing is shot fine. Then it's not such a big deal. But then later when it gets really reliant on 
jumping around CGI bullshit, then it gets a, a lot. I think the one thing with it is it made his powers feel very mystical to the point where I was like, yeah. how did he get this from bat DNA? It's not like bats right. can do that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you think. Because he could like <laughs> pseudo fly at one point. He can ride the air yeah. currents from a train. Yeah, he can, he I can guess. do a prototype. You ever played prototype? Oh, yeah. No, I haven't. It's that. It's that kind of flying where you, like, do that kind of, you, like, almost, like, lay forward and just go. Yeah, you're well, just kind of, like I said, riding the air currents. Now, yeah. um, I could be completely wrong about this. So, uh, amateur physicists out there, feel free to correct <laughs> me. But uh, I am pretty sure that the backdraft of a fast-moving object would help create currents that would help you fly. Uh, in front of it, you would mostly just get sucked underneath it. <laughs> like, that's true if you're a regular, you know, normal man flying. But if you're a vampire, it's actually reverse. Um, it's so oh, okay. different when you're Dr. Michael Morbius. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Vampires. That's actually a big, it's a mistake a lot of physics people make. Um, but yeah, that is different for, for Morbius's. It, you know, it is Morbius a, likes. It is a phenomenon that, uh, I think it's called backdraft, or maybe there's a different name for it. That might be a fire thing. I don't know. Yeah, but backdraft behind... is that movie where fire is like. <laughs> Remember that movie where fire is backdraft? deliberately killing firefighters? Like, kind of, right? It's like, is backdraft the one where there's a firefighter who like has like messages from the past or what? something? I think, so. I think it's What's just they're movie? just regular firefighters, except for the fact that fire is this almost malicious force deliberately seeking them out. So there's one movie where it's like kind of like the lake house where it's like someone's me receiving messages from a different time and it's their dad. I think that might be backdraft. Um, and they're a firefighter, obviously, but because it's like backdraft. It's like time. But anyway, yeah. Backdraft is when you open up a door and it all the air sucks in and explodes, kind of. I think that's what backdraft <laughs> as like a fire phenomenon is. Right. Well, whatever the term for it is, if you are... A, a flying creature or object behind another flying creature or object uh, has a much easier time staying aloft because of the wind currents from uh, the first one. A little science fact for you there, everybody. Enjoy that one. Thanks, Diggins. I enjoyed that science fact. I mean, it makes sense, right? Because, like, in cars, that's that's what drafting is, I think, is when one car is in behind the other car and it's a little bit, like... There's yeah. less air resistance, so they're a little faster. Yeah, yeah, similar principle. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that movie we had to do backdraft one of these days. Um, <laughs> Ooh, that's a good fun. next What's... next bracket winner. Remember backdraft. Oh, backdraft. It's one to force us to do. Um, but yeah, so they they uh, go and do all this stuff. Uh, because mm. now he is a Morbius guy, but he kind of disappears, and the and this is where our cops get involved, and they're not. Oh, good. I gotta talk about these cops. These cops. Oh, I'll tell you God. what about them. Say about these cops. All right, so I mostly want to talk about Tyrese. So Tyrese is here, and he's just kind of being. He's not even being Tyrese because he's not like fun or funny. He's just like you know what's funny. Neither of these cops are good cop or bad cop. They're both like concerned cop. It's like, we're yeah. not going to plant our flag in either direction. We're just going to be generally concerned about what's going on here. Yeah, one of them's kind of sillier, but not really. <laughs> like, yeah. you could easily do this with one of them. Yeah, right? Um, so, but we got Tyrese, right? And he's just like, come on, Doc. We're just trying to figure out what's going on. Um, now, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but Tyrese's hand is in his pocket all the time. Also, he's wearing a long sleeve jacket all the time, so you can't tell whether his arm is a robot or his arm is regular. We'll never now, know. Now, he does drop a line when they're questioning Morbius. Um, by the way, they, like, arrest him for suspected murder, but with very flimsy evidence. Like, it, yeah, I don't think you can do that. But I mean, whatever. He's the cops. Sometimes they just do stuff. It's, it's just, you know, stuff. he was resisting but, uh, arrest. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, most realistic scene in the movie is <laughs> Dr. Michael Morbius starts running away uh, when the cops are there to arrest. Well, they're just there to talk to him, but then they're getting an alert about how in the very building they're in, another blood drained murder victim is there. So, like, mmm, and Morbius is here right now. Mmm. And Morbius tries to run away. And just immediately, 
cop starts shooting at him just immediately. Yep. Yeah, just unloading lead. Um, God, in a hospital. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now this is a world. By the way, we haven't really talked about this because I think we get this immediately with with these uh, cops. This is a world where venom exists. And I mean, well, yes. you know, the line comes up later, but like, we maybe they just think right. this is another Venom. Maybe this is how they react to anybody that like maybe might be Venom. They just go crazy. <laughs> they just shoot them. Also, well, do you think that's what uh, cops are doing in real life? They're just like, yeah, maybe I can't take the chance that anybody might be a Venom. <laughs> 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 we'll hear that eventually. That'll be an excuse. Uh... Yeah. Um, also, I looked it up. The movie I am describing is called Frequency. Uh, and, ah. yeah, it, it, it does exist, um, and it is similar to kind of what I was describing, although I think in that only the dad is a firefighter, but yeah, it's about a radio that, like, gives time travel messages, but yeah, Backdraft oh, is what you're, you you describe just a fire, evil fire, kind of, um, <laughs> evil fire. <laughs> it's, it, it's like, the fire is evil worse than usual fire, uh, I think it's like there's an arsonist involved, I don't know, but yeah, okay. um, which is kind of like evil, yeah, evil fire when you get down to it, um, yeah, so Morbius, it goes to jail, kind mm-hmm. of. Now, yes. I think this is where originally, what's his name was? Vulture. Um, Vulture, yeah. That scene seems like it goes here. The one from the trailers, because it's different yes. than this one. Um, interesting. Mean, that sure would make sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's So, yeah, it's weird because if that were if that scene were in the movie, the hey Morpheus, we should get together some time or whatever the fucking line is. I think it's like, like that scene is like he's like, "Hey, you're a bad guy. I thought you were a good guy." It's like they're arresting God. the vulture. Also, they're just like both going to jail on the same day. I feel like it's kind of what I think that scene was in the first trailer. I don't remember. Big day for jails. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so like yeah, he does that shit. Um. But I guess if that scene were in the movie, we'd be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't make like, even less sense, because why is he going to jail? Um, <laughs> but, like, also, why is he here? The, the, yeah, I mean, that I mean that makes even less sense, you know, I mean, knowing what we, we don't, know. We don't get there until the end of this movie, unlike the movie that the know, trailers told us we but, would be getting. <laughs> but at least the end of that movie explains it? Well, it does it? it? I think if I saw him in this movie after all of the other stuff we've kind of learned from Marvel stuff, I just assume he's a different guy, but Adrian Toomes. Like, I would assume he's a... I see. Like, variant isn't the right word, because he's just the Toomes from that universe, and he's kind of more evil or whatever. Um, Like, I think that would have been my read on it. Or or he's somebody else, some other character, like the founder or something, or fucking Beetlejuice, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, could be anybody. I would Bruce love it if Ray Kroc was just showing up like, we gotta team up to get Spider-Man. We gotta team up to get those McDonald's guys, the first two that made McDonald's. We gotta get revenge. Dude, what, what if he them. was Batman and he was he's calling up Morbius to be like, hey, you're stealing my steez. Yeah. This is my whole place. <laughs> oh, that would make sense. I mean, Batman has fought Dracula too. They'd be a, That would be a good fight. Um, he teamed up with Sherlock Holmes to fight Dracula. Yeah. Uh, I like this movie. No, it sucks. Um, <laughs> the parts with Tyrese are also suck, but the whole thing sucks. Um, oh yeah, so right, sorry. So like, Ty- you never get to see Tyrese's like arm, and he has the line. It's like, "Hey Doc, I looked up to you. Your robot blood saved my arm in Iraq or Afghanistan, whatever." And yeah. it's like, okay, so I guess his one arm was saved, but his other arm was a robot arm. Then it turns out he, like, doesn't have a robot arm. But, boy, does the movie tease something that, like, maybe matters or not. Shut up. It, his robot arm doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, who is that character? Is he supposed to be, like, some guy who, you know, you go, oh, it's him. Yeah, I mean, I don't know Agent Stroud. Let's see. Uh, hold on. Let me do the quick Google search. Because I assume Stroud. that, like, I assume everyone is a comic character. For or are they just second? like. There was like a a moment where I was like, "Is he supposed to be Blade?" Oh my god, that would oh be amazing. Goodness, be so okay, great. so this guy does exist. His name is Simon Stroud. Um, oh, it seems like he's like not nothing. He uh he showed up for the first time in something called Creatures on the Loose. But uh, yeah, it seems like he's friends with Black Widow and he hunts some stuff. He hunts Morbius. He hunts cool. Man Wolf. But he is like a cop. Um, yeah, I <laughs> I like have to assume that just. 
they're they're just pulling names just to like all right yeah. put them in put them in almost like remember how in Amazing Spider-Man two B J Novak is supposed to be Smythe yes and it's like oh maybe that'll pay off one day no this, I promise this will never pay off <laughs> or how Felicia Hardy is supposed to be Black Cat and it's like, or um not Felicia, yeah Felicity Jones but, is supposed to be Felicia Hardy and you're like well, yeah, like, yeah yeah no but um this one I feel like after Venom maybe was where I kind of got I I got a sense it could have been that though it could have been um. The Amazing Spider-Man movies that like, yeah, they just pick names from comic. Like a character will get a comic book name that ha- doesn't really have anything to do with them to create listicles and stuff where they are sure, mentioned. Yeah. Like it felt like, yeah, like, oh, yeah, that guy, maybe he's like, at least with the BJ Novak one, I was like, oh, he's a star. Maybe he will be in the next one of these. But there's other ones where they just fucking get, just assign everyone a name. I was going to say, I don't well. think Milo is from the comics. <laughs> I feel uh, like I've no. heard that he's not. He's, he's kind of based on a character that does exist called Hunger, but ah, like he, okay. but the whole backstory of him being like uh, Mike Michael's childhood friend and all that, they made that up for the movie. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, also, I just put a link in the in our chat about the uh, robot arm. So it's like it might be a robot arm, it might be a bionic arm, like it might have some blood going through it and some stuff that it's unclear. So they're able to give him a bionic arm with blood and that's how he, they saved his arm? Yeah, that's maybe. Insane. Maybe. But like in well, the trailer, isn't it like a winter soldier arm? Like no, full blown? It, it's weird. It's like I mean you could see the picture. Okay, yeah. It yeah, yeah. looks like it could be a regular arm. Also, I could see a blood transfusion being like part of the surgery or something. Sure. Um, like the blood could but I don't know. Maybe like maybe somehow his hand was fine and his shoulder was fine and everything between them got exploded, but they were able to clap like put the hand onto a robot arm because it looks hey like man. he's a regular like his own hand. I don't know. It's so dumb. Sure, it's insane that they got rid of this and like Tyrese in interviews is like and I I do feel bad for these people in this movie except for Jared Leto, but like they're all like, <laughs> oh man, you can't can't wait for you guys to see what my arm does, and then it's cut out of the movie like. Really weird. Oh. I mean, good for Tyrese getting this role, I guess. I well, yeah, I he's he's got a uh, you know the the Fast franchise is uh, ending in the next three movies. They claim that I absolutely do not believe that, but you know he's yeah. got to got to start getting his bread buttered somewhere else soon. Well, I also feel like for these guys, for any actor, like especially a Matt Smith, I I feel like you get this role and you're like, all right, I'm in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Maybe if you're into that sort of thing, like not if you're like Christopher Eccleston, you don't really, have, you know, vibe with it. But you get a role in the Iron Man Marvel Cinematic Universe. This could be it. This is my, this is my Loki. And then you get a bad one of these, and then everybody's like, "All right, well, that's it for you." You know, like you could, you could be, he could be like Professor X down the line if he wants. Who knows? But he can't now, maybe because he was already in Van or in Morbius. So, like, I don't know. I feel like, sure, it's a nice paycheck, but... I mean, you gotta take the swing. If, like, you get that call, it's like, yo, you wanna be in a Marvel movie? You're like, yeah, finally, let's go. Like, you... you, Don't even show me the script. Let's just go for it. Yeah. (laughs) Movie stinks. Um, Yeah, so then Michael Morbius is a good guy for a little bit. Well... I want to talk about real quick. We we kind of glossed over when he does his superpower inventory of like, here's what all oh, my yeah. powers are. He's also kind of yeah. figuring out what his limits are when he needs to drink blood and everything. Um, and for some reason, part of that is just locking himself in some glass prison and just letting himself like go crazy from not drinking blood. And mm-hmm. I don't know why. I I read that scene as he's like, that's it, I'm ending it. Like, I I cannot be this. I will not kill. I will not feed. I'm locking myself in here so I can't hurt anyone. But then when Milo shows up, he's just like, please give me some blood. And he just comes out and drinks some blood. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like he had taken as much as he can. I mean, it's boring in little prison thing. I mean, sure, but it, it, it does not read very cleanly to me. It just, it seemed weird. Uh, and then this that's also the first time that he and Milo fight about using the cure because Morbius is all, oh, no, it turned me into a monster. We can't do this to anyone else. You wouldn't want to be like this. And they just go back and forth about that for a little bit. And at no point does anyone make the reasonable uh, point like, hey, man, we already need three blood transfusions a day. So uh-huh. what if... Instead of infusing them, we drank them. And then 
That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we're not putting any yep. more strain on the whole system than we already were. I mean, <laughs> I guess the artificial blood doesn't work, so there's that. We can't use that, but... There's clearly still people who donate blood because you have re- regular blood here in your yeah. freezer. And if anything, now that the artificial blood works for most people, we'll be putting barely any strain on the system at all. Most people don't need the real blood. We'll just be like, yeah, man, for our condition, the artificial blood doesn't really work. It's got to be the real blood. Uh, it's a rare condition, so that's not like crazy. It's a rare condition and you're the leading expert on it. So people will believe yeah. you. And then we just drink the blood, and then everything's fine. We already need the blood. It's not an extra burden. Well, isn't the bad thing with drinking the blood, though, is they go all, like, Morbius and, like, kill people? Like, isn't that why you can't do it? Well, no, if you don't drink the blood, you go all Morbius and kill people. Yeah, it seems like if you had the blood, like, if you just had the blood, you'd be okay. If you had a good enough amount of it that you could just have it every four hours or whatever. Be and fine. his main problem in the movie is that the artificial blood doesn't work as well as real blood, and it's getting less effective over time. So he's like, eventually, I'm going to need to start drinking human blood. But it's like, yeah, man, you already inserted human blood into your body three times a day for your entire life. Just inject it slightly differently. I don't understand yeah. why this is such a huge moral dilemma for you. Right? Yeah, it is It is weird. Yeah, because he is a doctor. <laughs> It's not that hard to just get some blood. It's That's interesting, great. right? It's like the and the angle could have just been like, I need to feed. Like for whatever reason, the blood's got to come from the neck of a vic of a person. It's it, got to it be can't fresh. Be from a bag. Yeah, yeah fresh know, makes sense. Yeah, like there, there's plenty of things you could say to be like, yeah, man, the donated blood won't work, but it seems to work because he drinks it and it works fine. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah. it's easy for him to get because. As far as the rest of the world is concerned, he still has the debilitating disease that requires regular transfusions. So it's not like a regular person who's got to figure out some way to be getting blood all the time. He already has an in. Yeah. No one would question it. Do you think if that played out the way it did, like Milo would still go crazy and want to kill people? Because that could have been a different, you know. Yeah, yeah. You could do that angle where it's like, yeah, just surrendering to the urge, even trying to do it responsibly, just kind of inevitably drives you to this like bestial uh, murder rampage and you know that's a dilemma right. right there it's just it just boggles my mind that nobody ever makes the perfectly reasonable argument that is very very obvious from the way the movie is set up yeah they just go back and forth like i have to be a monster who kills people to live like this i think being a monster who kills people is good and that's the <laughs> argument <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Good point. So, um, I, and this is around this time. So, um, and we don't even know how this plays out, by the way. But at some point, Milo just like is a Morbius now. Yeah, well, yeah. we don't know how. Like, I think it's he, while he do- Morbius is in jail. Be well, because the lab is like not protected. Then, right. right? And 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 silly little Morbius, he took a vial from the boat. Because, I don't know, man, he can't fucking help himself, I guess. Well, and um, every Sony movie needs to be about magic blood. Like, we've talked about this with Amazing Spider-Man 2, but, like, they love it when one guy has magic blood. They really <laughs> they do. I mean, I guess he took it with him because he didn't want it to be, like, left behind and someone got their hands on it and ended up using it. But then, I mean, they why did he... Was. <laughs> yeah, but then why didn't he just... Why did he just leave it laying around in his lab and not destroy it? Yeah. yeah. Also, what a risk Milo was taking. He didn't know, like, right? Like, he didn't fucking know what that shit was. Yeah, he does. It's not like Morbius in their argument, like, gestured at the serum, being like, "You should never put this precise serum into your body by doing this exact thing." And so, uh, uh, right along the sixth vertebrae, that's where you need to inject it on your yeah! back. Yeah. So you probably need someone's <laughs> help. Like, I'm sure there's a whole procedure. Uh, did he find his notes or something? And. It, he, it was into his back. I imagine he needed someone to help him. Who helped him with that? That's true. And, and like, he's not smart like Morbius is. <laughs> yeah. He's just a guy. Like, he would have fucked it up. He would have, like, drank it or something, right? Like, he would have, like, fucked it up somehow. Unless, like, it doesn't matter how you inject it. Like, Morbius was wrong. It's like, actually, you can drink this and you'll turn. <laughs> like, I mean, I feel like it wouldn't, it wouldn't be that big of a difference, right? Like, I guess Morbius seems to know. But, like, 
if it's vampirism, yeah, you just drink it. It's fine. That's how that's how it works. But he is the living so, vampire, so it is different. And also, you know, sometimes you go on a cruise and you want to take a you want a souvenir to remember the cruise. That's probably why. <laughs> just want well, to my, put a like tchotchke. I mean, my souvenir from a cruise is usually a, a norovirus. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, then he thought he had that in the little blood. Um. So. There's, I forget the exact sequencing of this movie. It, it's honestly amazing I remember this much of the movie. But, um, like, the, there's a conflict because there is a nurse who, like, Morbius knows is, is, like, a good, like, friend or colleague or, like, whatever. And she is killed oh in, like, God. a Morbius attack. And they know First they're Morbius person Morbius to, attack. Yeah. Right? Like, we see it from his eyes. <laughs> Basically. Or do yeah, we, and that's, but yeah. that's the one that the cops hear about that makes them want to arrest Morbius while he's right in front of them and makes him run right. away. Because he just, and, and he it's just like, wakes up in his patient from the start of the movie's room being like, what did I do? And that's like the uh, like one of those things, right, where it's like... um. They know they know it's the victim because the blood is removed, and they use the fancy word for it that Dickens probably knows that I can't remember, like exhumed or something. No, exhumed is no. when you uh, take a corpse what out of its it? grave. Uh, it's okay. exsanguinated. Yes, exsanguinated. He looked it up in the no. not you, favorite the, word. Al Madrigal looked it up. Like he was very <laughs> he was very impressed with himself. I knew that word before Al Madrigal even said anything. So there, well, yeah. I heard it for the first time. So there. I forgot. I think I heard it before, maybe, but I didn't really know what it was. I was right there with Al Madrigal. What about <laughs> Defenestrated? Do you guys know that one? No, I do I know that one, yeah. Defenestrated, the defenestrated in this movie? Kind of. Uh, people defenestrate Probably. themselves. I don't think anyone is defenestrated. Is that true? I thought you could be defenestrated. Oh, for sure. Well, no, 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 no. I'm saying in the movie. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, no, it's defenestration a, uh, is the act of someone else doing it to you. Yes, yeah. DJ, any guesses? On what? What, what that means? means. <sighs> defenestrate. Um, oh, to defang? Nope. No, it's not a vampire uh, thing. It's more no. of a, just a history. There's one big one in history. I can't remember. You know what I'm talking about? The things? defenestration of Prague. Yeah, there you go. It's where you get thrown out a window. Or th- someone throws oh, you out a window. Oh, cool. It's a, uh, yeah, it's fun. Okay. Um, fun fact. Don't get defenestrated. It's not good. But it was a thing. Unless it's like Uh, second story, we would probably live, but still not great for you. Yeah, like, if you have to be defenestrated, then yeah, go downstairs. Can you be defenestrated from, like, the first floor? I mean, you just have to be thrown out a window, right? It doesn't matter if it's high up or not. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, Anyway, yeah, so this movie has... um, Oh, sorry, so I just... My one stupid point. Um, So, this, like, fucking scene where this nurse dies, right? Um... There's like this. She's in a hallway all by herself. The longest hallway you've ever seen. This hallway is like the runway in Fast Six. Oh, it's did just, Tyrese bring it with him? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, we use this runway like a hallway instead of a runway, a hallway. And like the lights are flickering on and off. Like this is like an abandoned asylum, but it's seemingly like a regular hospital. Like, the lights are flickering on and off, and it's really spooky. And, you know, it's like, oh, there's a creature. And she's, like, running, running, running. And she gets to, like, a part of the hallway, and she turns the lights on because they were off, but they were flickering. And, well, like, it didn't make – I, like, didn't get what the fuck that was. So it seemed like they had this? some kind of yeah. motion-activated component where while someone is moving directly beneath the individual light, that light turns yep. on, which was – I was like, this is the most impractical lighting system I've ever seen in my life. I I was, oh, and that's why I kept going off, because it was like, it was sensing the vampire. Yeah, I guess oh, so. All right. I guess I didn't pick that up. Sorry. It's a very normal thing. I guess my nitpick is wrong. Um, <laughs> Fucking movie. And did um, you see that scene and go, wow, Morbius did that? <laughs> yeah, right. That was a Morbius thing. <laughs> I did. It I was like, off, was like, that's why I got to go get Morbius. I was like, that's a Morbius thing. A Morbius just did that. Exactly. Uh, and want... that's, that's what the police think. So they go to arrest him and he tries yep. to escape by going up to the roof, but the, where he then throws down his bag of blood for no reason uh, and then <laughs> gets really dizzy also for no reason. And Tyrese, who has run up the entire, like, skyscraper height of this hospital in oh my one god one minute yeah. then arrests him after he gets dizzy for no reason <laughs> this is something i've seen people talk about tyrese could fucking maybe maybe that's what his robot arm does maybe it lets him like 
run real fast. Like he, you know, maybe it's got a grappling hook. Cause yeah, there's absolutely no way he got up there in, in that amount of time. Even an <laughs> elevator, it would be like, you'd be, that would be a fast elevator. But I mean, like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. But I, I find that what happened to Morbius makes even less sense. Why did he throw down <laughs> yeah. the blood? Why did he just get completely disoriented with no external feedback? I don't understand I don't what know. that scene was. It's a good question. You gotta I, understand. Have, I have no Sometimes idea. Sometimes when you're Morbius, you get dizzy. That's just, <laughs> it was in one of the scenes that they like didn't explain how it worked. It was one of those. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a scene where the scene where he goes and, and meets the vulture in prison and stands in front of a picture of Spider-Man and goes like, by the way, here's one of my weaknesses. Uh, but they cut it because it had Spider-Man in it. So I get a we'll never know. Oh my God. By the way, um, I want to see my cool arm. No, we don't have time. <laughs> That's when I was like, is he Blade? Because I thought Tyrese had done something to him to make yeah. him all disoriented. But no. Oh, he... that's why you thought he was Blade. Oh. Yeah. I mean, Tyrese thought he... Like, I feel like Tyrese could have like made this movie and gone... Like, I feel like we could see a, an article or an interview in a couple of years who was like, pretty sure I was Blade. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, Blade in these movies. And everybody's like, I don't know, man. Let him have his thing. <laughs> no one's going to argue. Even Mahersh is like, I, I can't. Just, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not getting into this. I was really excited about the whole Blade thing. So Tyrese might slap me. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the, uh, did um, you get your his wife's name out of your fucking mouth? I, 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 uh, I probably should. I, yeah, I, you I gotta, don't know what his wife's You got to stop so. talking about how she loves it when he shaves her down there. Oh, oh fuck, yeah! I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about that too. What a weirdo. Not weird for doing it. Weird for talking about it. Weird uh, for posting about uh, it on Instagram with a picture. Yeah. Weird guy. That that maybe that's why they cut the scene. Like we don't want to get this guy. We get this guy out of the movie as quickly as we can. <laughs> um. Oh yeah. So that where are we now? Are we at the part? I really want to talk about the part with the robbery. Are we there yet? Uh, what, so we're we're almost there. Okay. I think the one thing that that we should note is there's the uh, there's the reveal in the right. prison when, when Milo visits Morbius. Oh my god! Yeah, that's so um, fucking stupid. Either of you want to take this one on? <laughs> so dig it. Full on, like literally, just the scene from the Usual Suspects. Mm-hmm. Where he, that's true, it is this scene <laughs> where uh, Milo shows up pretending to be his lawyer, being like, "Hey, we're gonna get you out of this, you know. Don't worry, you know. I got lots of money. Everyone knows that money and fame can buy you immunity from pretty much any crime, no matter how <laughs> obvious it is that you committed it. So we're gonna do that. Don't worry." Um, and then <laughs> I also love earlier in the in the interrogation, uh, because it is eventually revealed, as we've been alluding to, that he did not do the nurse murder, where yeah. the, the cops are like, yeah, if you had just murdered the eight mercenaries, I mean, they were mercenaries, <laughs> so who gives a shit? But yeah. <laughs> you murdered a nurse, and that makes you a bad person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> they are is- heroes. And in the Morbius verse, they also like drove the boats around the harbor in circles to honor the nurses. So <laughs> it would be wrong to to hurt one of them, right? But anyway, oh my um, god! And then he leaves. Uh, he leaves behind a blood bag for Morbius because he knows he needs it. It's actually very thoughtful, if you ask me. Yeah. And, and the cops didn't check him, which was good. You know, mm-hmm. he left anything in there—a gun, you know, some some C four, really anything. But you know, blood. There you go. Yeah. But then he left his cane behind, which Morbius notices. And we see him when he's walking out. First, as he's going through all the checkpoints, he's, uh, you know, wobbling, uh, unsure, you know, like he's usually walking with his cane or with his crutches or what have you. But then every time we cut back to him, he's a little more sure-footed, drinking some mysterious fluid out of a flask until we get to him outside the prison and he's striding confidently, no limp at all, totally fine. And it's like, oh "Oh my God, he was verbal Kent the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) No, wait, no, he was Kaiser Uh, Soze. We knew he was verbal Kent. Fuck. Yeah, that's right. Fuck, I messed it up. God damn it. You're okay. You're okay. 
Do you want to say it right and I'll edit it? Like I'll totally edit it to, nope, to make nope, you not nope, sound like No, 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 no. We no. never edit these podcasts nope. unless one says to... something terrible. Uh, unless um, we say something like that makes DJ address. look bad and then well, he'll yeah. regret <laughs> that. But not when I we wasn't going to do it anyway, but I thought it would have been funny to give you fault and to see if you listen to the podcast. That would have been a good test. I do I listen to the podcast, test. so I would have noticed. Um, it's fine. I'll I live also with my think, shame. I like in that scene that he was drinking out of a flask cuz I feel like people around him be like People carry water bottles. I think that guy's drunk. Like, people don't just oh, drink yeah. out of flasks. If it's you're a carrying thing. a flask, everyone knows you're drinking alcohol. I don't care how slick yeah. you think you're being. He's a cool lawyer. He's really... Also, I, I know... I knew this wasn't going to happen, because, of course, it couldn't. But I was like... what They shot the introduction of him in that in that um, shot just like Daredevil. Like, it was the same cane hand kind of camera turned around and i was like Yo, this is, they got one move for lawyers in these movies it's the kane reveal shot but um yeah it would be cool if uh, daredevil showed up in this movie caught a brick or something like that, that he be would cool? be more bss lawyer you know yeah more bss i mean he's a he's a jerk but he's like a good person so like he's a humanitarian or whatever so yeah um but yeah then morbius gets out of jail mm-hmm. and they have a big not like a big fight a little fight yeah it's like one of the fight. It's like the this is like the second fight scene in the movie, kind of. Yeah, this is what I called the half fight, um, where yeah, they just kind of look at each other for a lot of it, and uh, yeah, that's fair. Morbius flies the first time. That scene is Does so he... long. Oh wait, yeah, no, with the the, the train, yes, yeah. Um, that's how he learns. He can manipulate the currents or whatever. Yeah, the scene where he like where Matt Smith is like in the subway station and Morbius is in the subway station and they're both kind of looking at each other and uh, Matt Smith starts running over take it's a full like minute it's insane how long that shot is um but it's pretty cool uh because now Morbius flies away um and Matt Smith gets to go hit on girls at bars and just be a vampire. And, yeah. And, oh, I've, did he do his funny little but, dance yet? No, no he, he did. He does, he it, does it, it now. After, I think. He, he does it. Well, he does his first funny little dance in the half fight after he kills all the cops. Does a funny oh, little yeah, dance. Funny little I also want to say I really feel like so Matt Smith's character is the closest to being a complete character in the movie. I think, but we're really <laughs> missing a step. Because we have, he's mm-hmm. desperate for a cure, he doesn't want to be like, like this anymore, and he's kind of an irresponsible playboy type character, but, you know, loves, genuinely loves Michael Morbius, you know, has a good relationship with him and everything, blah, 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 blah. Then he gets the cure, or he gets the serum, and he's immediately a mass murdering psychopath. Just immediately. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I feel like we're missing the step where... He is like, oh, I'm cured. I feel so good about this. But then it kind of curdles and that, that the men, the few against the many type mindset and everything just kind of slowly makes him more and more okay with being a murder. Like, I, I feel like this is a slow burn change or it should be. And instead he just flips the evil switch on his back and becomes evil. Right. Yeah, you figure there would be like a scene... Like the one with the woman at the bar where he's cool and sweet and then he acts in like they have sex or something and then he accidentally kills her, drinks her blood and he's like, this is the best. But yeah, he's just bad the whole time. Um, it's and also, pretty good. I was like, huh. Uh, when it started, I was like, oh, this is an interesting twist that he genuinely likes uh, Morbius and like doesn't want to fight him or anything even though Morbius thinks he's gotta be stopped i was like huh i wonder where they'll go with this and the answer is nowhere he's immediately like well if you don't accept me for murdering people right away then i hate you forever yeah <laughs> yeah right i think the problem with matt smith's character is because he was clearly the bad guy they really didn't put him in many of the trailers so unlike with tyrese and morbius and stuff we can't figure out what his character used to be in the first cut of this movie by looking at the trailer and going like, oh, yeah, there's that scene. And they, they changed it. Um, so we'll never know. But There maybe. is like one trailer I can remember. It might have been a teaser where it's like, it should be us against them. And I'm like, is that a bad guy? Oh, oh I don't remember mm. that. I just remember one shot of him. That shot of him walking in the subway slowly. That was in like mm. every trailer. Um, I do feel yeah. like 
one can read his character arc and the arc of the movie overall as being, uh, as we were describing before, the movie's very, not very woke, uh, totally not woke. Uh, I feel like it is <laughs> easy to read this movie as being a very right wing, uh, story about how being gay is a choice and also bad. Oh, that would make sense. Cause he's, he, all his rhetoric is always like, ah, uh, I have to be who I am. You know, yeah. you all hate me for who I am. And also he's very jealous of Dr. Bancroft and is like, don't fall in love with her, Morbius. Spend all your time with me instead. And it's like, mm, I feel like mm-hmm. there's some homoerotic stuff going on here that has some really bad vibes. You know? Yeah. Like Joe got her hands he- on this script, too. <laughs> she, uh, instead of Fantastic Beast 3, she got a she took a, you know. A little detour on the lot to Sony decided to no, mark up no, Morbius. No, 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 that would well actually. I guess you could consider their change a kind of transition, and oh, uh, embracing no, 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 no. the transition is bad, but trying to fight it and rejecting it is good. That's true. Mm. That is true. Remember in those movies where she makes the werewolves like. The AIDS metaphor, and one of them is infecting all the kids. In the... One of them is the monster who infects children on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> those movies are bad. There's another one of those coming out. Ugh. Um, wait, We're doing I had it, a, right? I did have another thought. Oh, maybe there's an executive at Sony who's just like, make the characters gay, but not like really, but like, you know, put it in there. Make it really confusing. Make the allegory really confusing because that's kind of what Venom is too. It's that same. <laughs> At least yeah. Venom's a little bit more explicit with it in Venom, let there be carnage, or at least, like, doesn't want to really, I don't know. But Venom 1, it's that same kind of like, oh, maybe, maybe. And, but also, the Venom movies, in the Venom movies, the, the homoerotic undertones of the relationship are, at least it's a relationship we're supposed to think is ultimately good, right? That's true. This one is just, the evil villain is gay. Yeah. I, yeah, I could totally see that as, as being part of the movie. Although in that scene with the, with the blonde in the, in the club, he's like flirting with her because he's cool and sweet now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or was he just trying to get her blood? I don't I, I know. I couldn't tell if it was, it was just a night, night on the town for him. Yeah. I, yeah, the movie's dumb. Maybe uh, he was going to show her, her, her his cool dance. Yeah. Maybe he needs a partner <laughs> for da- some dancing. He, do you think that? Movies. We're getting that. In mo- that's just what movies are now. They're all going to have a scene with the dance uh, for TikTok or something. Oh, Finally, that- the world has caught up with Spider-Man 3. Yeah. Ex- <sighs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because I watched a movie this this past week that I don't really want to talk about because I didn't really like it that much. But uh, okay. there is lengthy TikTok scenes in that movie, just in the movie. And it's like very proud of it. Um, maybe maybe we'll talk about it. Uh but guys, we're at the dumbest part of the movie. My favorite part, the part with the with the <laughs> counterfeit hundred dollar bills. Let's oh talk about yeah! It. I've never se- in my life seen anyone try to counterfeit a hundred dollar bill. I don't think like if someone like is at the counter and they're like, "We can't take your hundred dollar bill. It's fake." You go like, "What about two of them? How many <laughs> under fake hundred dollar bills do you want what that about? you can immediately tell we're fake?" We can give right. you a whole bunch of obviously fake bills that you can't <laughs> use anywhere. Yeah. Uh, and also, my my favorite part of this is they're they're bribing her to do what exactly? Like, accept it? Accept the $100 bill as a $100 bill to pay for, I guess, the diner food or whatever, wherever they don't are? Don't they, like, come from outside? Yeah, they do. Um... <laughs> So what are know. they what are they paying for and what are they bribing her to do? Because they come from outside and then they immediately leave. <laughs> it's a great point. Uh, I don't I couldn't even guess. Um that I was yeah. I, I was like sitting there like what 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 are they doing? Do they exist <laughs> solely to I mean obviously in the movie terms they exist solely for him to get a lab he doesn't use for any purpose. <laughs> oh wait well, i guess he does he makes the poison actually never mind he makes the poison but i mean he doesn't like yeah it doesn't need to be something he steals like it it's a really weird subplot that happens about halfway through the movie where he's just like and it's so funny because he's talking to bancroft at this at this um bar or it's a diner not bar. I think you're diner diner yeah. cafe something like that 
And uh, and these guys come in and they do this whole thing with the with the counterfeit hundreds and it doesn't work. And then how does this happen? Does one of them say to the other one, "Good thing we have a secret lab." I think they say. I think one of them says we have to get back to the lab. Okay. Yeah. Classic line. Gotta get back to the lab. And Morbius is like lab. That's probably what that means. Only one thing. I'm gonna follow these goons and then get their lab from them. Now, so, I assume the lab you make counterfeit money in is different from a surgery <laughs> lab. This is what I was going to say. It's like, <laughs> I guess sure, it's, not. it's a lab in that they've got to mix together different inks and print and reproduce them in specific ways because currency is complicated. But yeah, it's all like ink stuff and ink mixing <laughs> and, and printing and whatnot. It's nothing that has to do with medicine. If it was a drug lab, I would... Kind of get it. I'd be like, yeah, they got chemicals and stuff there. You know, it's a whole process. Um, I can see how a doctor would be like, I can use, or especially a biochemist would be like, I could use this to do something. But a counterfeiter's lab? And why is there a, why is there like a drug lab level counterfeiter's lab just in the middle (laughs) of the city? I don't think that's how counterfeiting operations work. (laughs) <laughs> and it's not good counterfeits. Like, they're counterfeits that don't pass that little highlighter test. I assume the lab is just a printer that one of them has, and they cut the <laughs> bills off of a sheet of, like, seven or eight bills on, like, an eight and a half by 11 paper, and then just try to give them away to all the stores. But, yeah, I, I can't for the, like, I just don't, A, yeah, it should have been drugs, because that makes more sense. Or it just, like, why do this at all? Why not just break into other labs you already know? You're a doctor. Like, this movie keeps forgetting that he's a doctor and that he couldn't just do this with his doctor connections. It's I wonder so if, weird. I wonder if the, uh, the, the, for the counterfeiting, maybe, um, their plan is to make so many counterfeit hundred dollar bills that we're like, they're like, oh, well, one won't work, but then we'll start bribing people and then, you know, people won't be able to help themselves. Yeah. Like, <laughs> At a certain point, it's like, well, I mean, this is enough hundred dollar bills to like burn a fire large enough to keep me <laughs> warm tonight. So that is also kind of utility that they bring to me. I guess I'll take them. I can rip them up in a confetti. They're, them they're, they're offering to give me <laughs> ten million dollars in fake hundred dollar bills. You know, yeah, is, you know. I mean, you just give me a ream of paper. We'd be at the same point. <laughs> like, or they give it to her and she'd like fix all the problems with it, like change some of the words with like a pen and be like, oh, these are good now. <laughs> but um, also, I think if you're a goon and you start trying to give out your fake hundred dollar bills and then they don't go, you go home, you know, it's end true. of story, end of your day. You got to figure out these bills. You can't keep passing fake bills out to everybody. I feel I feel like if you try to pass off a fake bill and it doesn't work, you don't go like I have more fake bills for you, <laughs> proving that this is obviously a premeditated crime. I feel like you go like, oh shit, really? Ah, oh, damn, yeah, that sucks. right. Oh man, like act I, like you're the victim. Yeah. <laughs> also, also, I think he goes like, keep some for yourself. Like what? <laughs> It's like, yeah, use this hundred dollar bill to buy our whatever, and then these are for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys really folded pretty quickly on this bill thing. They weren't just like, no, it's not. They just went, yeah, I know, it's a fake hundred dollar bill. Also, for, but, yeah, for, we know we made them. For a movie whose premise is Morbius like becoming vigilante superhero, right? I think that's the basic yeah. idea here. This is the only non-Morbius related crime he does anything about in the entire movie and even then he only did it for Morbius reasons yeah yeah there, there's no vigilante curiosity that he's like oh what is it like to be a vigilante and also like I don't know fake hundred dollar bills it's not the worst crime I don't think we need to be involving Morbius in counterfeit money I, I figured he was gonna do big murders and I was like <laughs> Murders for counterfeiters? I mean, it's a non-violent <laughs> crime. Come on. Yeah. It's so weird. But yeah, then he goes, to, they, he finds them in a bodega, right, later? Something yeah. like that. Um, because he, he has, like, super, so- he's really good hearing. He has which some is, like, form of bat radar. Isn't his bat radar? Yeah, it's no, just, but it's not bat radar. It's just good hearing. Yeah, like, it's like daredevil powers, but. Cool. Yeah. 
it's weird because yeah he has super hearing and he does have the bat radar but yeah it's not really that much of a radar (laughs) it does i don't feel like we see it used as a radar except for when he's demonstrating that it is what it is but like tactically it's yeah, honestly hearing. daredevil's powers are so much more accurate because isn't that what the the uh, e- evil uh what um milo uses for uh to tell if she's telling the truth or not oh yeah that's right the heart so these thing. are just daredevil powers yeah but uh but yeah so then he fights the like he gets those guys when they're trying to be violent with the clerk right or something or are they i know because he he tracks them out the lab that's where he confronts them oh yeah uh, he's That's a real jerk. Jerks, 26 bones in the human hand. Yeah. So this is where we get our classic line that everyone loves. Yeah. <sighs> he says he's Venom. <laughs> he does. <laughs> and then the scene ends. Well, it doesn't end, actually. Because then it's a different line that's not the one, obviously, that's great, where it says, no, no, Dr. Michael Morbius at your service. He says, like, it's true. take some ibuprofen. It'll, it'll be better in a couple days or something. Yeah. I think he says a couple weeks, which is more yeah. realistic for a lot of broken bones. And, um, did they think he's Venom? <laughs> Venom is? Yeah, he exists in that universe. But the is, cops is were Venom. Like, this is a Venom thing. But is Venom new? Like, I feel like at the end of both the Venom movies, it's just the news is just weird thing happens at this mm. place, and Venom isn't, like, publicly known. That's true. Uh, Those are, like, t shirts. I feel like at the end of Venom. <clears throat> I feel like at the end of Venom, let there be carnage. There have to be people that know who Venom is. No, well, not at the end of that because of the events at the end of it. But by the end of that movie, I feel like he's doing some public He was in a club, right? At one point, he was just like in a club. And there was carnage. People people must know what carnage is. Um, Although he doesn't, I don't even know if he calls himself that that much. Like People might just be like Big Red Monster Man. But like he does things in public when he like uses the car to fight guys so yeah i feel like they know who venom is so i think they think he's venom i don't think people know what venom is though like i feel like venom isn't like a guy people just know there's a monster guy named venom i guess who has teeth and he just pretends to be him i think those guys think they got robbed by venom which is probably there's probably a whole nother venom movie in here where guys go get revenge on eddie brock and he's like i don't know what's yeah, going right? on i didn't even do nothing <laughs> to you guys what's up the all the counterfeiters in America band together to get their revenge on Venom. Yeah, yeah. Just it would be great because yeah, Venom would be so confused. <laughs> like, I don't think we did anything to these guys, Eddie. What? No, you you stole their chickens. No, that was a different guy, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> they they're throwing like bags of fake money at him. Like you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. <laughs> yeah. Do you um, think Dr. Michael Morbius knows who Venom is? He must. Is that why he invoked his name? Yeah. Maybe, maybe he Actually, names That's it. a good point. How would he know who Venom is if it's not publicly known? I think it is public. It's got to be publicly known. It's gotta but then be why would he say he's him? Like, that's where these things don't connect. Like, well, how can it be? Well, yeah, go it ahead. makes sense if it's a joke. Yeah. Um, but it's not. But I, I feel like people <laughs> yeah, know right. that there is a Venom guy and he looks like a guy and he has big old teeth and sometimes he's strong and whatever. And they're like, that was Venom. I also think Sometimes Dr. Michael Morbius is probably in the wind. A, yeah, exactly. I also think Dr. Morbius is a famous enough guy that they might just recognize him. Well, he's been yeah, on the yeah. front page of the doctor. Daily Bugle like every day for the past few days about being a big murderer. <laughs> yeah. Like, can you imagine what Jameson's saying about him? Anyone a Nobel he's Prize. A menace. Like, well, Jameson's huh? always wrong, so it would be something else. It would be like, <laughs> he's, a hero. Jam- he's, he's being framed. <laughs> Well, but yeah. that's actually kind of true. That's true. He would be he would be framed until the end of the movie, and then he'd, he's a menace because he killed that nice Milo man or whatever his real name is, Lucian. <laughs> yeah, Lucian was the real hero, and don't, and then he'd unmask Morbius, and Morbius's name is Michael Morbius, and then <laughs> yeah, it would be bad. Um, the, uh, the yeah. So then he goes and does uh, Morbius stuff. He does his blood stuff and whatever. I don't know. This movie just pretty much ends, too. We're, like, already at the end. Yeah. yeah I was so, like, oh, that's it? <laughs> when the movie ended. <laughs> there's this stupid... Right, so there's the... the t- fuck it, man. So there's the, the dumb fight, right? But, so Martine is gets, like, kidnapped or something? Or, like, Martine's... His plan is, to like, I've made a serum that I'm going to inject into Milo to kill him. Right. And then I'm also going to inject it into me. 
And he does this with the counterfeit lab equipment. Yeah. Um, and Martine's, like, helping. And I forget how, but at one point, like, Milo kills Martine. Well, he, like, gets her. There's a point where Milo, like, shows up to the lab when Morbius is doing something else. And he's, like, right. is trying to be good. Like, he's trying to pretend he's a good guy. Oh, we got to help Morbius. But Morbius has already said, like, Milo's the bad guy of the movie. So right, watch right. out for Milo. And then, like, so she's not, like, a hostage actively, but she is a hostage in that in that scene. I don't sure. know if Milo figures that out, but <laughs> I think he's kind of knows. But then at some point, he, like, kills her or something, right? Yeah, I couldn't I remember guess. what happened there, though. Like, did he so, snap okay. her neck? So we don't see what he does at any point. Okay. Okay. We hear he he has killed Doctor Nicholas uh, or left oh, him yeah, dying. Oh yeah, right. Because Doctor Nicholas is like, I am repulsed by you being gay. <laughs> 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 yep. Yep. Oh my god. Uh, um, so Milo gets mad and gives him a fatal wound, and then Morbius. So then. Dr. Nicholas calls Morbius on his cell phone. Couple things. Yeah. Right. Right. right, right. One, if he's using his cell phone, the cops can track him because yep. the, all they got to do is show up at the cell phone carrier with a warrant being like, hey, can you tell us where Dr. Michael Morbius' cell phone is? <laughs> and they'd be like, yeah, sure. Here you go. That's a thing we can we do. do literally every day, all the yeah. time. Yeah, we, especially we do it all if the time. it's like big old crimes, like a big giant yeah. Morbius crime. That's the thing. They would- like, on some deal. things, they might fight him on it. On we're trying to find basically a serial killer. I'm sure Verizon or whatever would be like, "Yeah, okay, here you go, <laughs> take your information." Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, second, uh, wh- how does he have his cell phone on him? He was in jail and he broke out. They took all his stuff. <laughs> That's how jail works. <laughs> uh, where, where did he get his cell phone back? I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> Uh, maybe he bought one. He maybe bought, bought one phone. and then but called then Nick- how Mike does the guy? Dr. Nicholas know how where his know what his number is to call him? <laughs> well, maybe he sent out a text to everybody. He's like, by the way, I just got a new phone. This is my number. Put yeah, it in Doctor Michael Morbius at your service. Um, <laughs> I guess that's what it was. I don't know. But oh God. all right, so, so yeah, you're right. He does call him on nitpick. his phone. Maybe there's a, that. Maybe that's a subplot that got cut out of the movie when he goes breaks into yeah, the prison. Right. His phone and shit. Back. I mean, DJ, you were talking about a scene where he like talks to him about being a Morbius now, right? So, oh yeah, maybe yeah. like oh, if yeah. that scene still exists, you could be like, I guess he gave him his number then or something. Yeah, call me oh. if you see Matt Smith again or something. <laughs> but then, yeah. um, so Morbius is there, hears his dying words, and is like, "Oh no, my father figure, he is dead," and then. Halfway across New York City, his some kind of bat radar lets him know that uh, Milo and Dr. Bancroft are whispering to each other on top of a roof for some reason. Yep. Oh, God, yeah. This this is one of the biggest, like, oh, they edited this to hell, right? Like, this yep. isn't how he found out about this originally. Yep. yep. Um, and then he goes, he rushes off, he flies through the sky because he's learned how to do that now. To get there, right. and when he gets there, she's dying, and we don't know how or why. Yeah, so that's weird. Yeah, <laughs> it is. That part's really weird. Like, what do you think the deal is with her? Uh, well, you see, Nando, there's a thing called fridging, uh, where <laughs> in order to motivate a male character, you simply take a female character he cares about and kill her. That's true. But also, these two had some kind of like weird love subplot, like kind of going on. They they made yeah. out a couple times after he'd become a Morbius. Well, so yeah. she's a bad guy in the in the comics. Apparently, I don't know what, who any of these people are. Like, I don't recognize any of these names, but I've looked it up since. <laughs> so um, what you're saying is we we're not going to be getting your casting the Morbius ver- Morbius verse video anytime soon. No, yeah, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, she's a. I think she becomes a vampire or some shit. I think well, maybe in the com- in the comic she was always bad. Um, I think she was his assistant originally, so I don't think she was bad originally. Maybe she's bad eventually. So I'm trying to figure out where in the like. In the part of this biography of, like, what she's up to in the comics, she becomes a vampire because she does. Well, I guess, you know what, in this part, she's probably not a vampire yet. But anyway, yeah, she, uh, 
I think makes a tries to find a cure or something. God, I don't even know. Oh, she gets uh, attacked by vampires, turned into a vampire, and then kind of is a bad guy. Um, so Classic. she's not like really true bad guy, but she does some stuff that's like probably bad guy stuff. I don't know. But yeah, she does get fraged very hard in this movie. Like pretty, yeah, pretty wild stuff. <laughs> To which, to which she has to go, uh, hey, I'm dying already, so you want to just, like, take a drink and, you know... Yeah. Waste not, want not. It's fair. I mean, so, like, if uh, I'm ever dying from something and there's a vampire that needs blood and I'm already dead, go for it. Have have at it. Blanket permission. If you're a good guy. Yeah. Now, or you you're a bad guy, because no, then you're not going to drink other people's blood. Unless you're the person who killed me. Because then I say no out of spite. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to set a bad precedent. But if it's just a coincidence, or you're a good guy, go for it. Plus, but you know, if, if I so say that, then it gives me incentive for all the vampires out there to kill me. To be like, exactly. well, you said I could have your blood now that you're dead. Yeah, I, it's it's probably it doesn't not going to happen. But hired I hired or asked someone else to kill me either. It, basically, you can't be involved in my death at all. Yeah, there's a there's a Slayer clause for my blood <laughs> that you cannot break. But Dickens, what were you going to say about Dr. Martin? Uh, well, Dr. Baycroft, you said that in the comics she becomes a vampire. Well, then, maybe if you keep watching the movie, we'll see maybe there's a little more accuracy in the movie or in the comics. Hmm? Yeah, they really actually did some of the comics things. These characters are all from the comics, and I couldn't care less. I have not, like, I've read a Morbius comic, maybe, probably, that he's in. But, like, you got to really try to read all the comics to get to Morbius, you know? <laughs> you like, gotta be, get, go far down the ladder before you're like, well, I guess I'm gonna read this Morbius comic. Honestly, like, it's so hard to be like, well, I guess I've, like, I, as a big X-Men fan, it's it would be impossible for me to open up the Marvel app and go, what are we reading tonight? Well, I guess there's no more X-Men comics that exist. Uh, <laughs> Morbius, like, there's always something better than Morbius. I mean, maybe the Morbius comics are good, but I don't know. But, yeah. So that Morbius and uh, what's his name? Lucian have a big old fight, and it's ugly. I hate his face. What do you think of his face? It's bad, right? Yeah, yeah. I like the face. The, I feel the facial thing, like the way they render their vampire faces kind of varies from scene to scene. Sometimes I'm yeah. like, that's not bad. And other times it just looks horrendous. Yeah, sometimes it looks like a Snapchat filter on a face. <laughs> like, it, like bigger eyes kind of and like different jawline and, and stuff. Um, I think the Morbius face usually looked fine. It's, yeah, the Lucian face for me looked all over the place, and I would say usually not very good. Um, and then they have a really dumb fight. Yeah. yeah it's, it's bad it's, that they did that. I mean, the other fights don't look great, but they're fine. This one is, I literally could not tell what was happening. There was a point yeah. where I thought they had done, like, the smash into the ground thing. Like, oh, they hit the ground. And then the next cut he's falling again and i'm like they didn't hit the ground what hold on and then there's just like a storm of glass and other bullshit just flying around and i i I literally could not see what they were doing i was like i yeah it's terrible this this is not possible to be followed by human eyes like as there i guess we only have three of these to go by three solo sony non-spider-man like spider-man spinoff movies but like they're all this Every single one is some sort of fucking bit where the bad guy who's the same as the good guy, they tumble around in the dark for five minutes and then he dies. And that's like not good. It's going to be interesting. I was, we were talking about this before, but they're making a Craven movie. I'm very excited to see how the bad guy is also Craven and just they <laughs> fucking tumble around because it it's shouldn't true. be. It should be Chameleon, his half brother or whatever, but probably not. Probably I mean, be really, some other... it should be Spider-Man. It should be Spider-Man. Well, I mean, don't, don't go crazy. I, I, all I All I really need. Is a couple of pictures of Spider-Man the Craven walks by that aren't in the movie. <laughs> that would satiate my Spider-Man thirst for a good. I, I don't know, but. Nano. I feel like I just need pictures of Spider-Man to show up on the wall in a trailer, uh, and then not in the movie. And I think that would have yeah. To be if, okay. if if Spider-Man is in the movie, that that would draw focus from the great Doctor Michael Morbius at your yeah. service. Like I need maybe I need maybe all actually, lights to be on him. You know, just as a compromise, we could also throw in a completely inexplicable character <laughs> saying the word Spider-Man in the, in the post-credits Love that. scene. <laughs> Love that, but no mouth. No mouth move. Uh, right, no. Want- <laughs> very obviously reshot without being able to get the actor back. On the phone or something. I want, like, <laughs> classic 
Yeah, we'll get to it. Um, I mean, the movie's pretty much over. What, what's the rest of it? Lucian okay. dies, gets poisoned or whatever. Or yeah, some shit. he uses bat powers to fucking just like. Oh yeah, he's Batman. Ass. He's Batman. Remember the bit where he stands in the thing and goes and does Batman like? Remember that? It's early, way earlier. He stands in the middle of this big tube of bats. Oh, and yeah, then they play the song from Batman Begins a little bit. Yeah, yeah. that's that's when Wild. he's doing his, his power rundown, where he's like, here's all my yeah. powers. And one of them is, the bats like me now. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. I have a kinship with these creatures. It's so close. As someone who, as a kid, like, listen to the shit out of that soundtrack. It's it's there. They they used a little bit of it, or they knew what they were doing. Um which, to be fair, I mean, same with Spider-Man. Like, they, they didn't put him in the movie, but they tricked us into thinking he was. They did that a little bit, I guess, with Batman, too. Um, but, yeah. the uh, They kill him, he dies, and then to the end. What do you think? Of, so, you know what was interesting? Morbius kind of has, like, a like an outfit in this. Yeah. he. Oh, that was yeah. that was another, like, Dresses really hard edit that, fight. like, made, made no sense. So, after Nicholas dies... He, like, goes into the balcony, and it's, like, a total costume change where, like, they must have shot something differently or maybe missed a scene. But I don't think that cool purple jacket he was wearing that gave him the purple trails yep. uh, was what he was wearing while Nicholas was dying. No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, that was a hard edit, too. It was like, oh, my God, Nicholas, I love you so much. Cut walking onto balcony. Like, it was a hard, hard transition. Yeah, it's I don't very like- bad. I'd like to say, so before this big climax happens, when he made the poison that lets him kill Milo, he made two of them. And Dr. Bancroft is all, what's the second one for? And he's like, uh, I shouldn't be allowed to exist. I'm a monster, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then the events that happen after that are uh, his father figure slash mentor. He finds him dying and dies in his arms. Uh, he finds his... A uh, girlfriend dying uh, dies in his arms, and then he drinks her blood because he can't control himself. Uh, then he has to <laughs> well, fight. Well, she said to right. Well, sure. She's like, don't let it go to waste, Michael. Don't let it go to waste. Sure, but still traumatic experience. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then he has to fight his brother figure, who has become a mass murdering psychopath who killed his girlfriend, uh, and has to kill him. Where in his last moments, he like you know, becomes pathetic and pleads with him and says he's sorry, uh, which again, probably very traumatic. And somehow these events have convinced him not to kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's a great point. Like, I don't Incredible advocate forces. killing yourself as a solution to anything. Absolutely not. But he said that's what he was going to do. And somehow living through probably the single worst night of his entire life has convinced him not to. Well, and a night brought on specifically by vampire stuff. Like, he wants to kill right. himself because he's like, I'm so dangerous. Vampire's dangerous. And then he, like, goes and his friend who's a vampire tries to kill a bunch of people he loves because of crazy vampire mind. And they all die. And he's not, like, he kind of gets convinced through that. He's like, you know what? Vampire's actually pretty safe. I can figure this <laughs> out. Like, I don't think you can, dude. I don't think you, I feel like unless you have a new girlfriend who dies right before the big fight every time, this is going to go south real quick. But it doesn't, though. It's That's great. true. They never resolve, like, how he's going to, like, continue to be Morbius. Yeah. I mean, like, kinda, as a person go. who is, you know, versed in these kind of how these movies usually work, kind of figured that bit where he's like, Dr. Michael Morbius at your service is the last scene of the movie because that's how Venom worked. Right. But. Uh, and and it's the same studio, and they only make one movie. But I feel like that would have made sense there as, like, the same shit, which they almost did with Venom, but then in the second movie decided Venom didn't want to do anymore, where it's just like, I'm only going to drink bad people's blood. Like, but, yeah, they don't, they don't bother. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just like, uh, there's, there's no point where he seems to make any decision about being a vigilante. He only does Morbius yeah. stuff, all movie, and then at the end he just leaves. That is really weird. Yeah, the movie's oh, really so awful. So bad, dude. So um, bad. This is, uh, this is also, I I believe, the scene where you see Tyrese's robot arm a little bit. Um, yeah, you get like half a... It seemed like the showdown was going to be in like a field. That's all I was waiting for this whole movie. I'm like, when are you thinking it gets to that field? Yeah, so I know what you mean. There was a scene, yeah, there was a scene that was in the trailers where he gets out of a car, like like um, Tyrese does. And yeah. it's like, that. yeah. 
What is there a longer shot of? Tyrese's robot arm or those two ladies kissing in Rise of Skywalker? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, not too many. Uh, I, I, I can't even... Not very many of either. Could use more. They should have had the cops be like... Um together maybe they were were actually we're a couple well no dj as i explained the thesis of this movie is that being gay is a choice and to make that choice is to be evil so we can't have gay people in the movie movie. yeah and that would make this movie woke we can't have a woke movie cannot make a woke movie we already got one person of color no thank you uh we're we're already bordering on you know and by oh i guess yeah a couple but like one is more than enough for woke um yeah (laughs) Although I'm, so I'm well. sure I like I'm sure what's his name would love a spinoff of whatever his name was. Mr. Stag or whatever the fuck that character's name is. Simon Tyrese Stroud. Definitely wants to ma- Stroud. Yeah. Tyrese wants to make Stroud. Um, so there's a post credit scene. But before that, the movie ends with another little post credit scene in the middle of the very end of the movie. Oh. What's the deal with the girlfriend? She's now a vampire because he drank her blood. And that's I, how you become so, a vampire? So there were two things of the serum left, and Milo took one of them. It is possible that he had stolen the second one and had given it to her, and so it just looked like she died, because that's kind of what happens to you when you take the serum. Right. But That's such a long road to get there. Yeah, and he didn't I don't learn know. anything. He's making more vampires now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not, 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 my, not Morbius. Serum. Not Morbius. Milo. It's possible oh, Milo, Milo did that. Mm. Oh, maybe. Oh, wouldn't she say something? Like, I'm a Morbius now. Well, That's she's true. I guess she didn't know that he... I, it just doesn't make sense. The thing is, it doesn't make <laughs> sense. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we get a little clip of Morbius flying away with his bats. And then for, like, completely separately from that, we just get a close-up of her face and her eyes open. Cool. It's just like fucking Venom 2. Remember that? Where the bad guy is toxin and he's like, ah, my eyes are oh, open now. Yeah. I'm a bad guy now. Yeah. This movie is Venom. Yeah. It, it's it's Venom 100%, right? I forget it's... if I, who I said this to. Or, like, they just, yeah. Oh, we, we talked about this before. They control yeah, left Venom before. but left one Venom by accident. Like, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's Venom. They shouldn't make Venom again. They should make new movies that are better than that. Venom only kind of worked because of Tom Hardy. And instead they added the actor everyone hates. Instead, it's the main guy. It's crazy. It'd be great it's... if they cast in Tom Hardy as Morbius. <laughs> sure, whatever. <laughs> what every non-Spider-Man yeah. project Sony <laughs> does is just starring Tom Hardy until we eventually have our Avengers, which is just a whole bunch of Tom Hardys <laughs> meeting up. That would yeah, be fuck great. Why not? Who yeah. cares? And they all can do different accents, but none of them really work. That's like how it has to go. <laughs> yeah. He has to have like a, I don't know California accent for this one or something. And, uh, yeah, he just kind of tries tries something out every time. But, I mean, I'd rather that than this, because oh, pr- yeah. probably be interesting. I don't know. This movie's bad. But, you guys, there's one more part of the movie. <sighs> Perhaps the most important part, according to, like, the people promoting the movie. Yeah, because... The only reason they make these movies is to do this. I mean, the director on Twitter started talking about it, like, a week and a half ago. As part of like a Q and A, and like so, they weren't even trying to hide any of it, which is insane. Uh, but so, what's the first one? Anybody want to talk about the first one? Well, I, I can't. Uh, <laughs> dang, it's good well, DJ, if you want to do it, please feel free. No, no, no. I was gonna say I can't differentiate them. So okay, I'm gonna be like, hey. so we we are back in the, the the jail that Morbius was in. I think I think it's the same jail. I think so. Too. Um, yeah, well, first probably. we get Who knows? first we get an outside shot of New York City with a giant purple crack in the sky. What could that Whoa. mean? Yeah. yeah, what could that uh, be? I mean, I guess everybody watched the Spider-Man movie, so everybody knows. But imagine if you didn't. How yeah, this fucking nothing stupid about this be? makes any sense if you no don't. Sense, but that's just that's just these movies now it's if you haven't watched the other ones they just don't make sense yep that's true Um, but yeah yeah, uh, so what happens uh then we go to the jail and there's a there's a wolf sparkle flash or whatever inside one of the jail cells and who to our wandering eyes should appear but batman's own michael keaton Michael Whoa. in jail clothes because he was in a different jail, I guess, at the time. 
I mean, I guess he, he was in the feet. same jail in the other universe because he was also in New York. Right, right. That makes sense. Um, do you guys remember what he says? I hope they got Hopefully better food in this joint. Food. Yeah. Uh, that seems like a pretty crazy thing for him to say after that <laughs> happened. <laughs> yeah, I would think he'd say, holy shit, what the fuck just happened? And like, oh no, I'm not in the same universe as the daughter I love. That was my whole thing. Like, this is a bad thing for me. But instead he's like, oh cool, portals or something. Huh, neat. And then, oh, God. And then it turns, to, and then we get to a new story about how this guy suddenly appeared out of nowhere in a jail. And we're probably going to let him out. And I'm like, what's this probably business? You have a man in a jail that you have no record of committing any crime or any reason he should be there. And you're like, maybe we'll let him out. I mean, that's honestly probably a very accurate reflection of the U.S. prison system. But it's also insane. Yeah. And also, I guess, like, maybe if you live in this world, a lot of people got dropped off in prison that day. <laughs> from other spider-man movies and stuff and then it's like well i guess you know just gotta figure out which ones are actually bad and which ones are just people that kind of knew spider-man and then jaywalked and we're in we're in jail but yeah they uh they let him go hey good for him you guys remember so what he says? Are you advocating criminals just be let onto the street yes i believe so this isn't like some, <laughs> this isn't some woke movie digging oh, that's, that's right true. shoot well, oh but, man you know, well, I mean, remember special. remember when milo when he visits him in prison is like you shouldn't be here michael this is a place for uh drug lords <laughs> and uh, and murderers or whatever the fuck he says basically <laughs> he kind of does say some some non-woke stuff about criminals in this in that scene well, i was gonna say michael keaton is a a little different in a couple specific ways, you know. So he should go. He shouldn't be in jail. Something, you know, he doesn't belong there. It's not woke. <laughs> yeah, we, we're still we're still on non woke. Yeah, he Milo's like somebody as as pure as um, uh, <laughs> untainted as you and your blood shouldn't be in a prison, Michael. <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> you have blood that is better than everyone else's blood, Michael. You're special, Michael. Your special your blood. Your special unsullied blood. <laughs> so oh then God. he gets let out of jail. They just let him go, which is fine, I guess. And he's like, he's okay. He's not a criminal. So yeah, you know. no, that's fair. I mean, like, he shouldn't be in jail, but also he has the reaction of like, huh, guess I'm not in jail. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> does it go like, what, you? Universe am I even in? Where is this? Okay, let's. Can I? Someone talk to me about this? No. Yeah, he's no, not no like. Uh, there's no record of me existing in this entire universe. I have no social security, no citizenship status, <laughs> no money or friends or family or loved ones. What the hell am I supposed to do? Yeah, but um, then we get another post credit scene. Now oh, I know there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense about this post credit scene, but I would love to know where Morbius got that car. <laughs> He steal it? I guess that is the main question. <laughs> he stole a car. So he does belong in jail. He's a bad guy. But then uh, who to our wandering eyes does appear in a slightly different outfit? Um. Uh. Well, we, we never know because we don't see his face. That's uh, true. So, Could be anybody. Uh, probably some guy. <laughs> uh. And it's so, yeah, it's the fucking vulture. It's insane. He shows up in a vulture suit. Uh-huh. That is different from the one in the other movies. Yep. And apparently, according to the director, he built that one. He did? Okay. I, he has so, to have, because didn't, it didn't come with him, right? So he just yeah, right. took a day and built a but, vulture suit or whatever. But wasn't all his technology based off, like, the alien stuff that he salvaged? Yeah, and that other guy <laughs> built it all for him. The tinkerer <laughs> built it. Like, I guess you could potentially make some of it, like, with different shit, but he's, that's not what his job was. He didn't seem very smart. Maybe in this universe, like, their technology is just so much better that he's able to, like, cobble that all together without alien technology. Yeah. Because it's so good. That's fair. Yeah, maybe they just do have vulture suits that are a little different, and he, like, painted his green. That's what he did to, like, that's why the director said specifically, like, he's pretty resourceful, so you never know. Um, That's what being resourceful meant. Now. He goes, leaves his helmet on, okay, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know. which is amazing, uh, and goes to Morbius, <laughs> and what does he say? 
Um, I can tell like, you. I know all the words. Yeah, please, please. Burned into my brain. So <laughs> okay. He says, hey, Doc, I've been reading about you. You're Michael Morbius, right? Or something like that. And he says, this is the part that I really just like blew my mind. He's like, I don't know how I got here. Thinking of something to do with Spider-Man. <laughs> Why? What what gave you that idea? Two or three years ago, you did Thanos shit. Like, that happened. Why do you think this is a Spider-Man deal? Do you think in prison he was like, I bet this is a Spider-Man thing when, when the yeah. snap happened? Maybe nobody told him. Maybe he didn't get snapped, and he, or maybe he did get snapped, and they just leave you in jail, because they don't, they don't tell you. And then, uh... And he just like fucking Spider Man, and oh then my God. he shows up here, and um, Morbius doesn't go. Who's that? Morbius yeah, right. Goes, yeah, it like, sounds about right. Are you saying how like I'm a Batman? There's a Spider Man, <laughs> yeah. who has like spider blood in him. Morbius blood. is like, even if let's say it, it wouldn't make any sense, but let's say that would that all made sense to Morbius. Like it was like, oh yeah, I do know who Spider Man. Like there is a Spider Man in our universe that I've walked by posters of many a time. <laughs> this doesn't yeah. seem like the kind of shit he does, does it? Like I just, I, I just, it's so stupid. It's Watch so it. fucking stupid. In that interview, the director trying to explain it, even though he clearly does not have an explanation, and it was just something yeah. they made him include. Just being like, well, yeah. you know, these the sort of repositions, they happen in, in, you know, sometimes and maybe like in the mov- later movies, you know, you kind of get to see where the journey happened that brought him to the place. And it's like, so it's nothing is the reason. You're saying the reason is nothing. Yeah, well, yeah like outside of the whole him, if he was just the vulture of this universe and that was a different guy. And then he's like, OK, so my I, I saw this guy in prison because that scene was cut. And then he was like, call me when you get out. And then he did get out of prison because I don't know, fucking something. And then they met afterwards. Like, sure, that that kind of tracks almost. Um, And they're not just trying to kill Spider-Man or whatever. Or maybe they are trying to kill Spider-Man, but they're not they're not like trying to figure any of this out. They're just like, we both have a problem with Spider-Man. Yeah, that like almost kind of works. But also like this is just like he doesn't seem to have any a curiosity about what's going on. But be like interested in returning to his universe. He just wants to team up with Morbius because Morbius is a vampire. <laughs> well, like, the thing is, you know, bats eat spiders, so both of them are thinking, well, if he's a bat person and there's a mm. Spider Man, then they're natural enemies. That is makes more sense than in the rest of this shit. Um, and are you a vulture man? Are there all kinds of animal people just roaming around? No, yeah, that no, was like the, you, no Roman is the the cop. Oh, that's right, that's right. That's right. Very good point. Um, <laughs> do you guys think like so? You know, Morbius is just like Spider Man. Sure, whatever. Do you think like he just lets any old person walk up to him and be like, "Hey, I don't like someone. You want to team up?" And he's like, "Sure," because he doesn't ask the Vulture any questions. He's just like, "All right." Yeah, and I gotta I'm assume Spider Man's a, a good bitch. guy in this universe, I'm in. <laughs> right? Like. It'd be, it would be like if he was like, hey, I don't like, I don't know. Who's like a good guy? Like, I don't like a firefighter. You want to kill him, Morbius? And yeah. Like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Not only Spider-Man didn't do anything in this movie, he doesn't seem like he's, yeah, he doesn't have any bad stuff. Unless maybe Morbius is a real, like, real truth or when it comes to Spider-Man, he's listening to all the Jameson podcasts and stuff, and he's like, somebody's got to like, do something Spider-Man, about that I guy. I know this guy. Yeah. Fucking clown. But um, does, does the Vulture go, I'm thinking six. Does he say that? I no, think I remember him saying. He just says, uh, I think some guys like us should team up. I mean, like, yeah, I, I cannot even guess. They would be such an awful team, these two. Like, <laughs> they have no, they're not anything like each other or any like they're just, it's just so awful it's the most awful desperate post credit scene i've ever seen so who's who's our six who's who's our sinister six you gotta figure cravens and, Vel- and venom are involved right because craven's okay, getting so a movie four. and venom already exists in the universe unless carnage got- but like one of them i think i know carnage died but whatever so we got those four <sighs> what else uh they're making a movie about um um what's her what's her name madam webb Oh, that's so, true. Oh, okay. I forgot about that. Whoever the bad guy in that is, I don't know. Or Madam Webb, but Madam Webb, I feel like, is usually a good guy. Like, Also, I feel like he's like, we should team up. Okay, for what? What do you want to do? Do you want to play cards? Do you want to kill someone? Do you want to do good stuff? Like, because 
I don't even know what the Sinister Six wants to do. Also, they position Morbius as, like, a good guy. He's yeah. like, I'm not going to kill people anymore. And, like, you know, I guess whatever. Like, at least with Venom, right, it's, you know, there's that push-pull of, like, I don't want to kill people. It's like, I need brains. But that's not really a thing in this movie. They want it to be, but it's not. Because yeah. there's just, there's no fucking struggle. Like, you could convince me that these six guys think they're going to form the Avengers. Like, <laughs> yeah, they, that is yeah. what they think they are. Because the Sinister Six get together to beat up Spider-Man and rob banks. That's their whole thing. It's not mm. fucking taking over the world. It's just we're having trouble fighting Spider-Man individually. The six of us would probably do better. But, yeah, like, they don't... These guys don't want to do that. Also, like, he knows it's Spider-Man, but he doesn't know who Spider-Man is, I guess. That part's weird to me. But well, he doesn't, he, wouldn't. he doesn't say, like, spy, who's Spider-Man when Vulture mentions him. So, like... I'm saying Vulture doesn't. Oh, yeah. Like, when now that I'm thinking about it, when Dr. Octopus got trans like transported back to his universe did he also not know peter parker spider-man anymore oh because then he was just like well i guess he just forgot peter parker existed well did everybody in every universe forget peter parker was spider-man or was it only in the mcu that they had to do that yes it's oh i mean i guess it's only in the mcu it's really only a problem in the mcu in the other universes, only those characters that we already spend time with, like that were in this No Way Home, were the characters that didn't that knew Spider Man was Spider Man. I guess Harry and like the other vil- villains that haven't shown up yet. But like, I don't know. Hmm. This movie's bad, and bad. the post credit scenes just like a Awful. an abomination. Also, the vul- vulture looks worse. I feel like they. I'm not positive about this because I don't. I don't remember. I think they got rid of the wings. Like the you know how the wings had like little knives at the end of them. Yeah, used them to cut yeah. the webs once. I don't think they have those in this new one, and that's a bummer because mm. those were cool. Uh, yeah, who are the other Sinister Sixes? I guess the Madam Web villain, and then I don't know. So the the two of them, Craven, Madam Web villain. We need two more. You could do Chameleon if if Chameleon's in the Craven movie, but I don't know if he is. Like I haven't seen any like casting about that. I don't. I oh. think the villain in the Craven movie is gonna be somebody else. And I left out Venom. So, uh, yeah, I guess if Chameleon is in it, that's six. Yeah. Or maybe it'll be like the other time they tried to do Sinister Six, and it'll just right. be like, never mind. Right. It's weird, because, like, uh, we haven't determined which universe this takes place in, although I'd have to imagine it's the Garfield universe or something. Like, it can't, well, it can't be the yeah, that, universe. The, the universe with that... <laughs> That dang orange cat who hates Mondays and loves lasagna. Yeah. It takes he place in the same universe as Jim Davis's classic. He would join the Sinister Six, depending on if their views about lasagna, uh, lasagna Mondays aligned. He would definitely. I was going to say, only if they don't work on Mondays. Yeah, Garfield doesn't give a fuck. Uh, but yeah, so if this is the Garfield verse, and it has to be because the Venom is already in the Spider-Man 3 movie, so it can't be, like, this can't be Tobey Maguire, then maybe Rhino? Maybe he'll show up in this? Oh, man, I hope we get Paul big Giamatti old... shouting in a big robot suit again. Yeah, that'd be fun. Actually, I like this. Okay, Morbius, because, yeah, that's good. And the lizard's still alive, I guess. And Electro's, well, I guess the lizard was always alive, but Electro's still alive. So you can steal the lizard, Rhino, Electro, Vulture, Morbius, I guess. Now we don't really even need Morbius. And then Craven, and that's a Sinister Six. I feel like Exciting. you almost want to cut, cut Morbius for Venom, because he makes more sense on this team. Oh yeah, Morbius makes no sense on this team. But. Yeah. I mean, he did start as a Spider-Man villain, the character of Morbius, but this Morbius has absolutely no connection to Spider-Man whatsoever, so... But then, that's yeah. true, this universe is Venom, too. So, who fucking knows? Be- being related to Spider-Man is the only way Sony keeps getting away with all this crap. Well, and it's, it's weird, because with Morbius, at least with Venom, and I, I don't think this really works in the movie as, like, the Spider-Man connection, but, like, at least with Venom, the concept is, like, alien, bonds with people, whatever, fights them, and, like, that's big tentacle sometimes, looks, like, kind of interesting. With Morbius, the whole pitch for him is, like, what if a vampire was in a superhero comic, and, like, what would that be like if it fought, like, you know spider-man and shit but if you take out spider-man this really is just a movie about it's like just fucking twilight or like any vampire movie it's not even a good vampire no yeah a bad a a very bad one but like it's it's weird because it's so much not like 
It would be like if it was like an Australian vampire movie where it's like, oh, what would a vampire be like in Australia? But they set it in America. And it's like, well, the all, the rest of them are this. So it's not interesting anymore. I don't know. It's really awful. Ah, uh, yeah. <sighs> you guys, hey guys. want to talk about things we actually liked and get to our classic segment? Oh, man. Would love I to. would love right, that. DJ, you got anything to recommend to the fine people? I do. Um, So I played a board game over the weekend um, that I'd like to recommend. It's called Pax Premier. What is that? But, all right, so it's 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 really hard to describe. So it's like a political influence game. So the game takes place in like 19th century Afghanistan. And ah, during the British like, invasion. Yes, so there's three fa- factions. You have the Afghans, the British, and the Russians. Um, and they're all... You're like vying for political power and influence in um, Afghanistan. So like, it's not like exactly like a war game because um, like combat's not a big part of it. Um, it. Like the best analogy I heard to explain it is like if it's – think of it like Game of Thrones. Like you don't have a house. You're kind of like Littlefinger. Like you're trying to move pieces on the political board uh. to advance your goals. So you're not like one of the factions for the whole game. You'll switch around – the factions based on what your goals are. Um, so like a tricky part about the game is like, you don't want to be so obviously too well with one of the factions. Cause then like everyone else are just like going against you. So you need to like convince people like, Oh, come to my side. It'll be good for you. But then actually it's um, you know, it's you're, you're kind of trying to play all sides of the political space. So um, it's, it's a long game. It's, it's very interesting. It's, it's a cold world game. So it's the same guy who did like root, um and uh uh I'm trying to think of the other one vast like just those other and kinds oath. of like wait, oath wait oath, he, uh, big one. he did a game that's not just one four letter word uh yeah that's true pax premier is not just a four letter word why is wow. it called pax premier uh maybe there's like a history reason that diggins knows why it's called that but i don't know I mean, Pax is Latin for peace. I don't know what Premier is in Latin. Uh, like, I just assumed when you said it, it was a Penny Arcade Expo game. Oh, sorry. Pax Pamir. P-A-M-I-R. I don't know. Pax Pamir. But yeah, Premier, I, when I say... thing might just be... Yeah, it's a mountain, it's a mountain range, range in yeah. uh, okay. Afghanistan. But yeah, so when there you say you go. board game named Pax, I think, like, Pax. You know, like, Pax yeah. East. So I get it. I yeah, was I very it. confused, but now I get it. How um, many people play this one? It's anywhere from uh, two to five. Oh, okay. How many have you played um, it with so far? Played it with four people, and that was like a solid number. Um, it's interesting how much like the the you're kind of always in it. Like like you could go from zero points to like winning the game just because like dramatic political shifts can net you a lot of points at once. Um, and the game end conditions, you know, the, basically the way the game ends is like when one person is winning. By like four points, the game's over, which is like basically assured victory. So it it it's pretty balanced in terms of like you're not gonna um, have one person get ahead and the game goes on for too long. It's like when one person has hit that point of the game, the game's over. So it, it's an interesting way for like how a game can end. Um, but yeah, I I really enjoyed it. It's um it's really expensive. So it's like either go in on it with like a dedicated board game group or have a friend who has it. Um, how expensive is really expensive it's 120 dollars woof yeah uh yeah it's like really expensive so um games man it's good quality but like you know it's just like yeah it's just expensive is it a lot of little pieces yeah and high quality they did that one of the it's a fabric map Um, oh yeah so it's like a very high quality game which you know that's that's like mileage may vary in terms of like (laughs) is this what you want so you know nice uh, but yeah, I, it's a game I very much enjoyed. Um, it's also one of those if like you ever like go to like a PAX or something, or like you know if, if there's like you have a local game store where you could try it out. That's always like an option too, right? That makes um, sense because I know sometimes the barrier to entry is high. Um, it could be like a who's on first situation, you know, where you go to PAX and you're like, I'd like to play PAX, and they're like, oh, You're at go. PAX, sir. <laughs> that probably happens. A yeah, hearty that's, chuckle that's shared by all. Damn right. Uh, um, so that's one thing. And then the only other thing I want to mention is I did start watching The Ultimatum, which is that show I mentioned last week. And it's a wild show. And I, I won't go too far into it. But I will say, like, if you think that you like crazy reality shows, this show has some, like, crazy 
people just involved in the goings on. So if you're any kind of reality show fan, like give this show a shot. It's it's pretty nuts. Interesting. I I honestly might. I might put it on next time I'm doing some editing or some something like that. Uh, and and that I'll say too. this, and I, I mentioned this like the guys beforehand. It's a really good background show. I don't think it's a thing where you're gonna like sit down and like intently watch it and get a lot out of it. But like it's a good background show where you know some of the stuff you're like, oh, this is kind of boring, blah blah blah. But then there's other points where it's like, oh, I should pay attention now. And the show really keys you in on when you should be paying attention. So, um. Yeah, I, I could see it being a very good like video uh, video to have on while editing. I, I could see that very much being the case. So, nice. Yeah. Uh, Diggins, what about you? What do you got to recommend? Uh, I just got uh, one recommendation for this week, but it's one of my highest recommendations ever. Oh, what? Wow. I Dr. saw Michael movie. Morbius. <laughs> yeah, I'm recommending Morbius. Best yeah. movie of uh, definitely the most cheerworthy moment of all movies. <laughs> Uh, oh my god he would be... he does kind of enter the vampire force in this <laughs> it could win we True. should make sure it wins next year like we should start a stupid campaign but <laughs> to be f- funny and not annoying <laughs> anyway sorry well, we'll on. see if they even do it next year after this uh but no, no 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 uh i watched a movie this past week that i absolutely loved like walked out of the theater my brain chemistry had been altered. I was I was just so blown away by how good it was. And that's a little movie called Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, you've probably seen some trailers for this, or, or if you've been to a movie recently, uh, especially an indie one. Uh, it's a movie by uh, Daniels, uh, which is a team of uh, two directors. They've made Swiss Army Man a few years back. The movie where Daniel Radcliffe is a farting corpse who... Uh, is befriended by Paul Dano. Wait a uh, second. Are their names both Daniel? Yeah, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinhart are their names. Oh, I couldn't figure the Daniels thing out. This makes a little bit more sense. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, this one is stars Michelle Yeoh, Ki Hoi Kwan, uh, Stephanie Su, and Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, Michelle Yeoh is a uh, owner of a laundromat who that is being audited by the IRS who during that said audit is contacted by an alternate universe version of her husband uh, to be told that the fate of the entire multiverse rests on her shoulders. Uh, And she is able to access the skills and knowledge of her alternate universe selves uh, in pursuit of that goal. Uh, And that sounds like it might be a somewhat generic, like superhero type premise, but it is absurd off the wall. Like if you, if you are familiar with the Daniels's work, they, they have this real talent for combining really like crude humor with almost like transcendental, uh, like themes. Like they have a way of elevating, uh, crudity to an art form. Like the movie is incredibly funny. There's just so many moments. I don't even want to like spoil them. Uh, by talking about some of it but there's just so many moments where they use the utter absurdity of like what it means to be connected to every single possible multiverse uh to really creative effect visually it's it's stunning it was made on a 25 million dollar budget but you'll watch it and you'll that you'll like it doesn't show it is incredibly well crafted and just they the way they use editing and uh, like the visual aspects of the medium to convey so much information about like the multiversal nature uh, and how there's all these like quick cuts between things to emphasize the, the parallel workings of the different universes is just so uh, it's so impressive. And then it's also just surprisingly emotional when it gets to the climax, it just builds on everything it's doing so beautifully that it was like the first time in a long time I can remember that I actually like cried in a movie theater. It it hits so hard. And oh damn! It's just it's an incredible movie. I already want to see it again. So you should definitely. It is this weekend. Probably as you are listening to this, it is hitting a wider release. So it'll be playing in a lot more theaters than it has been. You should definitely go check it out. It's an incredible movie. Cool. Damn. Yeah. My, my highest rec ever. My highest possible recommendation. Wow. I you're the I was, multiverse, baby. 
I was it's telling fun. people, yeah, I hate I hate to be helping Nando's prediction, but I got to be honest about how I feel. I was telling the people I saw with, I went with a couple of friends after it was like, I can't remember leaving a movie like this high on it since Fury Road. Oh, wow. I remember how high you were on Fury Road. Damn. That's oof. All right. Cool. Uh, I have movies, too, but they're not quite as good. You know what I will say? We are one. Speaking of things that I like absolutely love. We are. Today is whatever, Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, so we're a day away from it. But the f- first season of Severance is about to wrap up. It wraps up Thursday Ooh. night is when those episodes get dropped. And, like, Thursday night at midnight, not, like, Tuesday night at 3 a.m., like the Marvel shows do. So I know some people that do watch it at midnight. Um, And that show is just so damn good. I know I've already talked about it, but, like, I cannot wait for that finale. It is my most anticipated thing. Uh, But... Beyond that, I did watch some movies. Uh, I watched a movie called The Bubble. Either you guys see that? I it's heard about it. thing, right? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I heard it wasn't so hot. So, so yeah, Judd Apatow. It's yeah. a f- yeah, really honestly, it's like a funny premise, and there's some funny moments, but it's also really dumb and not very good. Uh, not like not very good, but like it. It really there's like there really are two extended TikTok dances. Filmed in TikTok form, like Oof. vertical video. It's so weird. Um, and it's just, it just, I, I don't like it. Uh, I, I thought the movie itself was okay. Um, there were a lot of things that they did where I'm like, oh, that's funny, and, and it just didn't really kind of go anywhere. Uh, so don't watch that. Uh, to, well, yeah, I mean, we watch it. It's fine. It's not the worst movie I've ever seen. Um, it, I mean, beats the pants off of Morbius. And it's got, it's, it's a little bit of like COVID humor where it's like, eh, this is, this is funny. I think it might be funny, but also I, I still don't like watching it. Maybe, uh, I think they more or less got the balance right, but yeah, it was a little weird. Um, I also watched, so I watched two other movies this week that were good ones instead of bad. Uh, I watched a movie called Queen and Slim. I'm betting Diggins has seen this. DJ is not. Is that right? Yep. I've actually never well, seen it, but I I remember oh. wanting to see this movie. Yeah, it's Double cool. Uh, I don't want to really spoil it um, because the, I, I kind of knew what the deal was going in, and I almost wish I hadn't. Not that it's like a big twist, but uh, the whole – it's you know what it has a vibe of, and not in the same way, but it kind of feels like that movie Good Times – where it's just like the energy is, or, or like any Safety Brothers movie, I guess, where the energy is just so high because it's like, what is happening right now is crazy. And like, it, it's so, it, it's very good. Um, uh, Daniel Kaluuya is in it. He's great. Uh, Jody Turner Smith, I believe, plays not the titular queen because their names aren't that, uh, but it is like a kind of Bonnie and Clyde kind of name, you know, one and the other. Um, I think that is her name. Um, and, uh, yeah, Jody Turner Smith. Uh, so I watched that, liked it a lot. Um, I also watched a movie called, and this was kind of a recentish one. You think I see After Yang? No. no. It's, it's pretty good. It's about, uh, this one's like, it takes place in one of those far future, or like near futures where things are a little bit different, but not that much. Uh, and one of the things that's different is like if you, like Colin Farrell and Jody Turner Smith also in this, do. Like, if you adopt a baby from China, one thing you can do is buy a robot that is like an older brother to them that is okay. also seemingly a Chinese robot to kind of teach them about their culture. Um, Like, it, it feels like it's just a person. Like, it looks like a person. It doesn't look like a robot sure. at all. Um, But it's like kind of like a, you know, it's almost like a member of the family. Uh, And the whole premise for the movie is in the beginning of the movie, it breaks and... So it's kind. It's a movie that's kind of about like you know a little bit of it's like what do robots do? Robots love whatever. Uh, but a lot of the rest of it's just about like a movie where the son of the family dies and Colin Farrell and and Joey George Smith and the daughter are all sad about it. Uh, but it's pretty good. I thought it was. I thought it was good. I like Colin Farrell a lot. Big year for him. Uh, like he's obviously he's great as Penguin. Um, and like big silly characters uh but he's also good at this like the lobster and like um the other one that that is killing of a sacred deer like kind of quiet melancholy dudes i i like him a lot um yeah so i would i would i would recommend that and queen and slim a lot and the bubble it's fine 
It's not <laughs> it's not gonna change your life. But uh I was hoping for a movie that would change my life. I mean those two not like Queen, everything everywhere all at once, which, yeah, you know. I think Queen and Slim is a very, very, very good movie. I'm honestly surprised it didn't get more Oscar love or anything like that. Like I think it came out in like 2019, so it was the year that like Green Book won, I guess. And like it probably, it's better than that. Um, and it's yeah, it's just an interesting, an interesting premise. Uh, but yeah. So what are we doing next week, fellas? Sonic. Sonic, Sonic. two. Sonic two. Sonic two. Mm. Have there like been any that. early reviews for it yet? Do we have any kind of idea of how it is? Yeah, there's uh, been a few. It's. Basically, the reviews are basically like, it's okay. Yeah, they're, I, I feel like okay. the reviews are like, listen, I don't really care about this movie, so I didn't really like it. And then other people are like, it looks pretty good, and also I like Sonic the Hedgehog, so I did like it. I feel like a lot of it is like, is it fun for you to watch Sonic the Hedgehog run around? If it is not, then you're probably not going to like it. But if it is, you'll, you maybe you'll get get through it and like enjoy it. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I... Yeah, I guess we're doing that. Um, that'll be fun. Does uh any th- anybody have anything to plug, DJ? Uh, just roses and rejections, where we will we will be covering um the ultimatum and the um NBC uh show. I think I mentioned this week the the um I want to keep calling it the proposal, but it's like the Bridgerton show, the courtship, the courtship. Um, it's not very good. I would not recommend it. Um. For whatever reason, network television cannot figure out how to do good reality dating TV shows, and um, I don't know why. It's because they won't say the f word. Like that might help. I think it, <laughs> it does might help. help. I do watch these these shows. Like the, I, I feel like I've done that at least. The circle or not circle, um, but the the Netflix ones, and they yeah, like curse, and I'm like, oh yeah, and... that's funny. Like yeah, that's how people talk. So, uh. Diggins, you got anything to plug? Just my usuals. You know, I got my newsletter, a little perspective.substack.com. I stream sometimes on twitch.tv slash this is an odd name. Uh, I mentioned last week I have a piece right up up right now of Emily Vanderwerf's newsletter episodes, which you can find at emilyvdw.letterdrop.com. We are uh, playing anything recently? Oh, um, I haven't on done Twitch. any streaming recently, but actually I was thinking of... Uh, I may next week stream. There's a new game called Norco, which is a kind of a sort of an adventure game in terms of like text adventure uh, sort of game uh, about a futuristic uh, New Orleans uh, and your character going back to find out what happened to his missing mother, which I've heard is really good. So I wanted to check that out. Figured it might be a good streaming game. It's cool. Uh, yeah, I feel like this week I don't have too much. I'm going to be on some podcasts and stuff coming up, but we'll see. Uh, like, I'll talk about those when they come up. Um, I was in a uh, um, Screen Crush video about Moon Knight, just talking about it, uh, the first episode. Uh, so you can find that from like maybe three or four days ago. So probably like the second of April. Oh, um, I... So I put out two videos recently. One is about Magneto and how Marvel should deal with the fact that he's kind of too old to be a Holocaust survivor. We've talked about that. Um, and then the other one is the Mojoverse video, which is very good and I love it. And it's just about casting all the Mojoverse characters. Uh, that one's on Nebula only, so you can sign up for that and then watch it. Uh, I've started doing my Twitch streams again where I draw the new X-Men characters I'm working on. So I don't know if I'm going to do one tonight, but I'm going to be doing them this week. Um for guys like everyone's favorites, Thunderbird and Sunfire and Banshee and maybe Wolverine, who knows if we'll if we have time. But definitely those first three. Uh yeah, that would be fun. So twitch.tv slash Nando V Movies. Cool. Until next cool, week. Cool, cool. I've been at Nando V Movies on Twitter. I'm at Zippy by Day. I'm at This is an odd name. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Woohoo! Bye, we love you. Bye.